The story begins with a guy in a dark tight suit standing behind a green monster with yellow eyes. He was wearing a blue jacket and looked serious. The guy looked belligerent and looked at the monster with hatred in his eyes. In past, the guy looked ahead, his face was covered in blood. He had blonde hair and one of his eyelids was swollen. Standing in front of him was a guy named Han Kang Kai. The guy was sitting on the ground and called the other by name. Above them was a huge monster that looked like a man. On the giant's chest was a wide stature with large fangs. Kang Kai stood in front of the guy and spread his arms to the sides, as if trying to protect him. The monster screamed at them that trash would remain trash, and then told Kang Kai that he would crush him. The giant ran away and said that he made him wish he had stood up again. Kang Kai stood motionless and then told the monster that he was not trash. Blue light flew around him, and it was as if there was water under his feet. Suddenly he frowned and told the giant that he... And he didn't finish speaking, and his fist lit up with a yellow light, as if it were electric. The monster swung its huge fist at him, but Kang Kai hit him. He told him that he... And he didn't finish. Some time ago. Kang Kai stood in his school uniform and thought that he wanted to be the first everywhere. He remembered his report card and thought about how well he was doing in his studies. And he didn't finish the thought because he remembered how he was playing football and accidentally kicked the ball right in the face of a classmate. He thought that he was also in sports, but he didn't finish the thought. Kang Kai remembered how he was asked at the computer club how it was possible to play so poorly. In the game, he was just running around with a knife in his hands, and the guy asked him what he even knew about the fact that he was stupidly running with a knife in his hands. The guy taught him to play games. Kang Kai thought about how he was not good at anything. After some time, he walked along a crowded street and thought that everyone says that every person has his own talent. He stopped and looked at the sky, and then thought about why he didn't have talent then. He wants to be the best at something, but he's ordinary. What can he be good at? Does such an activity even exist? Suddenly, he was distracted from his thoughts because he was called. He looked towards two muscular men, and they told him that he had a special energy. They looked friendly and were in office suits. A man with short hair asked Kang Kai if he wanted to receive a message of goodness. He became embarrassed and blushed because he was called special. After a couple of minutes, they were all in an alley. A man with short hair asked him if he really needed to repeat himself. The bald man asked him how much money he had with him. Kang Kai looked calm and told them that he had nothing. The bald man held a book in his hands and pointed his finger at it, and then told him that he shouldn't get himself into trouble because you have to pay for the truth. They were definitely bandits. The man told him to let Kang Kai give them the money as long as they ask him kindly. Another bandit told him that otherwise they would beat him. Kang Kai told the bandits that he had nothing. The bald man sighed and told him that then the price of truth had been reduced and he could only give them his share. The other bandit was unhappy and told the man that they had agreed that they would both receive the money. The bald bandit made a blank face and told him that he should stop talking nonsense because Kang Kai doesn't have much money. They started arguing about who would give in to whom. When the bandits stopped shouting and looked towards Kang Kai, he was already carefully walking away from them. The bald man grabbed him by the backpack, and the other asked him if he had deliberately decided to quarrel between them and then run away. Kang Kai apologized to them, but was told to shut up. The bald bandit waved his hand at him and told him that this situation would not have happened if he had immediately given the money and therefore heavenly punishment would overtake him, and then hit him on the cheek. Kang Kai opened his eyes wide and was surprised. The man continued to beat him and shout at him to give him the money. Kang Kai covered his face with his hands and asked the bandit to stop, because he was in pain. They didn't listen to him and continued to hit him on the head. Kang Kai again asked them to stop beating him, and then he closed his eyes and punched the bald man right in the face. His blow was so powerful that the bandit gushed blood from his mouth. The other bandit looked at Kang Kai and didn't understand what just happened. The bald man was thrown several meters away by his impact, and then his body collided with the wall. The man with the short hair opened his mouth wide and was scared, and then looked at his comrade, who was lying unconscious. Kang Kai opened his eyes and didn't understand what he had done. The bandit asked him what he did, and then he ran at him and said that now there would be punishment of the earth. Kang Kai looked at his fist and then swung at the bandit with a serious look. His fist glowed a little with a yellow light, and she hit the man in the stomach so hard that he coughed, and then flew back and hit the wall. Kang Kai's punch was so powerful that it sent bricks flying off the building. He thought that he did not know whether it was an accident or fate, but a hidden talent had awakened in him. 
The bandits lay unconscious on the ground, and Kang Kai looked like he didn't understand anything. With this talent, he can definitely become the best. He looked at his fist and thought that it was incredibly strong. Some time later, a guy in a school uniform and glasses was holding a book in his hands. He skeptically asked Kang Kai what happened. Kang Kai clenched his hand into a fist and told him that this is how he found his talent, and now he can become number one. The guy continued to read the textbook and simply said, What is the use of good physical abilities? King Kai told his classmate not to be confused because he has a good punch. And then I asked him, In what field can you become the best with such talent? He will look for it. A classmate walked ahead of him and clearly looked uninterested in this dialogue and simply wished him luck. He closed his book and told Kang Kai that for a third-year Korea high school student, there were only two things one could use one's physical ability for. This is to become an athlete and bring glory to the country. But this requires a lot of capital, at least in order to find a good coach, and in unpopular sports there are few investors and it will not be possible to cover expenses. And the second option is a career as a military, police or ninth grade firefighter, to become a guarantor of security and justice, and to receive a government position and a stable future. But the number of applicants to the military academy every year is about 10,000 people, which means there is a lot of competition, and this year there were 160,000 applicants for the place of a ninth grade employee. He stopped and asked Kang Kai if he had a lot of money. He answered in the negative, and then a classmate asked him if he was good at studies. He again answered in the negative. The guy with glasses turned away and continued reading the book again, and then told Kang Kai to better give up, because he is not the only one with talent. A classmate frowned and told him that besides this, he needed at least some experience, but he didn't have that, and then advised Kang Kai to study better. They continued walking along the road, and the guy with glasses suddenly said that he remembered another option. Kang Kai asked him which option he meant. The guy said that there is no need for grades or money, only power. Some time later, Kang Kai looked serious. He was wearing a classic suit and stood motionless with men standing on either side of him. Suddenly, everyone shouted, Welcome, Boss Hyun Nim. A large man in a suit entered the room, and everyone else bowed to him. They stood on both sides, as if creating a path. It was the boss of the MAGA faction named Quack Dushik. Dushik raised his eyebrow questioningly because he saw Kang Kai. He asked everyone, What kind of kid is this? The man with earrings in his ears said that he dared to take him to them because he said that he wanted to become number one in the gangster world. Dushik stood in front of Kang Kai who was still bowing to him. He asked him if this was really true, and he was ready for anything. The boss leaned towards him and began to talk about the activities of their group. Kang Kai opened his eyes wide and bit his lip. A couple of minutes ago, outside the room, the two men were talking. One of them asked the other if everything would be okay. After all, this is the most influential group. They were holding pistols in their hands. The man asked the other if he was suggesting they just turn a blind eye to what they were doing. They must catch Dushik. Apparently, they were detectives. The man with burgundy hair was named Puck. The detective in the black jacket told Puck to trust him and stop talking nonsense. They need to go inside the premises. He told the detective it was almost suicide. Nevertheless, they abruptly went inside the room and shouted for everyone to stay where they were. Suddenly, the detective in the black jacket panicked and asked Puck what it was. What happened to the group members? Dushik and his charges were unconscious. Some time later, it was a small park. The sun was shining in the sky. Kang Kai walked calmly along the road. There were benches everywhere. He sat down on the bench and said that he had arrived. Suddenly, a handsome man came out of the bushes. He was wearing a plaid shirt, and then he called him Baby. This man was a handsome beggar named Chik Han Du Jin. Handsome Du Jin straightened his hair with his hand and asked Kang Kai if it was difficult for him without seeing the beauty of his body. He can look at it as much as he wants. Du Jin sat next to him and asked him what happened. After all, he had such an expression on his face as if he had eaten shit. Kang Kai told him with a serious face to send him to the academy. Du Jin coughed in surprise and then laughed and asked him how he would do it. He has neither abilities nor money. What are abilities anyway? How to use it? Kang Kai looked annoyed. The handsome man told him that he only asked him for what a beggar could do. At this time, two girls were walking not far from them. Du Jin turned sharply towards them. There were leaves from the bushes on his head, and his face seemed to glow. He asked the girls where they were going. He called them beautiful ladies. The girls blushed with embarrassment because he was so handsome. The girls laughed and continued walking in the park. They showed him a thumbs up. 
Do Jin's the money in the bucket. He was pleased with himself, and so he told himself that he was still just as good. Du Jin asked Kang Kai why he wanted to go to the academy so quickly. He talked about how he wanted to become the best at something. Kang Kai remained silent, and the handsome man told him that he had little chance of becoming the first student, and then asked if he had really decided to give up the search for his talent. Kang Kai looked at him and said that he was told that talent alone is not enough and experience is needed, but they don't have that. Du Jin made a displeased face and told him that he didn't have to remind him about it, and he turned away from him and asked what was wrong with that. Kang Kai looked down at the floor, and the beggar asked him if he was good at studies. He answered him in the negative, and then Du Jin sat very close to him, and then told him that this was not necessary. Talent and experience. Why does he need this? Better let him eat the caramel. Kang Kai told him that his friend told him that this was all he needed, but Du Jin continued talking about the sweet and tasty candy, so he fell silent. Then the handsome man told him that talent is a great thing and the best gift that is given once in a lifetime. Du Jin looked at him and told him that it was only because of his dazzling beauty that he lived as the best beggar of all beggars, and then asked him if he liked his appearance. Is he jealous? Suddenly two bandits appeared in the park, apparently looking for Du Jin. He quickly jumped into the bushes, and the bandits were talking about whether they had seen him here. One of the bandits asked the other how this fool dared to take his money. Kang Kai continued to sit on the bench with a casual look. The men were looking for Du Jin and swearing obscenely. If they get their hands on him, they'll do bad things to him. Kang Kai stood up and called Du Jin his father. He told him that he was going to leave and his father had better hide. Suddenly his father shouted to him to wait. Two branches came out of the bushes on which lay a leaf. Kang Kai told Du Jin to throw out his own trash, and he told his son that it was a gift for him. He was surprised, and his father looked out of the bushes and told him that if he went there, he would definitely be able to find someone who would help him reveal his power. Kang Kai took the piece of paper and asked him how he knew about its power. Du Jin pulled his hand out of the bushes and showed his class, and then laughed and told him that it was a secret. He wished him luck and disappeared into the bushes. Kang Kai held the piece of paper in his hands and thought that Du Jin was speaking in some secrets, and then he looked at it and was surprised. He saw that it was written there that no education was needed, no work experience needed either. Kang Kai remembered his friend's words that he had no options, and then he saw and finished reading what was written on the piece of paper. They are just looking for a strong person. He thought that there was no activity that required only strength. But in his hands was a leaflet with an announcement about the recruitment of hero interns. Kang Kai opened his eyes wide and thought that he would really become a hero. Some time later, Kang Kai stood and looked at the building. He exhaled loudly as he tried to gain confidence and then walked inside the building. A guy with blonde hair was looking at him. He looked at the map and asked if this was exactly where it was. The guy was wearing a hat and a blue suit. He also looked at the building. There were a lot of signs hanging on the brick wall, and so he asked if such a company could be located in such a small building. Maybe he came to the wrong place. Suddenly, he saw the very top sign, the company was really located here. He was surprised and said that we need to go inside first. Some time later. The blonde was standing in the elevator, there were a lot of people here, and everyone was talking about something. The woman on the phone said that Min Yi's mom would come too. The teenagers laughed and also talked loudly. A girl with short hair was telling her friends that the Pokemon game was really cool. The girl with the hair clip told her that she didn't have a game console. The girl with bangs told her that her mother would buy it for her if she got more than 70 points in her intermediate math exam. The elevator was half empty, and the woman continued to talk loudly on the phone. She said that the coffee here was cheap and delicious. The boy asked his father where his mother was. He told him that she had gone to buy apples. A guy with blonde hair stood in the corner, and finally the last woman came out of the elevator. She was still talking on the phone about some young Gi's mom and what they would discuss at the meeting. The blonde's name was An Di Young. He was 35 years old and looking for a job. He said that it was hectic, and it was immediately obvious that this was a cheap area. He put his hands in his pants pockets and thought that it couldn't be any other way, because a company with such low requirements couldn't be normal. His mom and dad constantly tell him that he doesn't have a job, even though he's already 30 years old. He looked at the yellow folder in his hand and said that this was the only place that accepted his documents. But they were looking for heroes, what does that even mean? Da Young looked in the mirror and started picking his nose with his finger and then said that he didn't care what it meant because he would just go and check everything himself. 
It's not every day that he gets called for interviews, and so he'll just try. He just needs to get the job. He continued to pick his nose with his finger, and then turned and saw a girl with purple hair. She looked at him with hostility, and he screamed in fright. Da Young thought that everyone had exited the elevator, but when did this girl get in? They got out of the elevator on the same floor. The girl quickly walked forward, and Da Young thought that apparently she was in a bad mood. Suddenly, his thoughts were interrupted by a girl with long blonde hair who called his name. This girl's name was Kim Tanai. She worked in the first hero squad and was responsible for office work. She had blue eyes, and her ears were like elven ones. She told him that she was pleased to meet him, and then introduced herself and asked him if she had misunderstood. Da Young became embarrassed and told her that everything was correct. She bowed in front of him, and he thought that she was super cute. She had such interesting ears like elves. Tanai suddenly came closer to him and smiled, and then told him that he really came. She was surprised by this. He was even more embarrassed because she was standing so close. Tanai told him that they had not had a single candidate for 12 years. He smiled awkwardly and remained silent. She thought about it and told him that she didn't know why they had so few volunteers. Dai Young looked at the spider. It was hanging from the ceiling. And then he thought about who would even want to come to such a place. He smiled and blushed, and then rubbed his finger on his cheek and thought that it turns out that he was automatically hired. Tanai interrupted his thoughts by telling him that today, there were two people willing at once, and it was simply incredible, and then asked him if he could wait a little next to that guy. He saw Kang Kai sitting on a chair, and then he walked over to him and sat down next to him. Da Young frowned and thought, why today? Isn't this a set of interns? What is a high school student doing here anyway? Kang Kai looked at him intensely and then turned away abruptly. Da Young thought that he was really ignoring his presence. Kids these days are so arrogant. But Kang Kai suddenly introduced himself in front of him and said his name. Da Young was surprised and did not understand what the high school student told him. Kang Kai said his name again and told him that they would be interviewing together and then bowed in front of him and offered to try. Da Young agreed with him and then thought that he was not so bad. Tanai opened the door and told them to come inside. There were two chairs in the office on which Kang Kai and Da Young sat, and in front of them sat Tanai and a man in a suit. He had red hair. Da Young thought that she would really conduct the interview in person. Are there no other people in this company at all? He looked at the guy with red hair and thought that maybe this was the interviewer. Da Young examined him carefully and noticed the tattoo near his eye, and then thought that it was a little scary. Tanai told them that it was time to start the interview and called Da Young by name. He became nervous, and she looked at his documents and asked if he really graduated from Hanguk University and only did part-time jobs. He told her that it was true, and he was preparing to get a job in this company. That's why. And he didn't finish the thought, because she asked him when he got his computer skills certificate. Da Young told her that he got it in elementary school. She told him that he had a fourth dan in Taekwondo. He told her that it was to get leave from the army. Tanai asked him that he really had a grade point average of two. Was he in second place? She felt sorry for him, but he remained silent and thought that the ad said that they would not look at grades. Tanai continued to conduct the interview and asked him why he needed a second category driver's license. Da Young thought about the detailed questions she was asking him. But she was so happy about his visit, although they met for the first time. He looked at the floor because it embarrassed him. What would Kang Kai even think of him? Tanai told them that it was time to start the interview with Kang Kai. She wanted to ask him a question, but a guy with red hair interrupted her and told her that her questions were boring. This guy's name was Kim HWA Ran. He was the head of the first squad of eight heroes, and his nickname was Flame Warrior. HWA Ran leaned his head on his hand and opened his eyes, and then told her that she needed to ask the most important thing. He had a lip piercing, and one eye was completely black with a white pupil. He asked them if they were strong. Da Young got nervous because he noticed HWA Ran's eye and thought it was lenses. The flame warrior was sitting calmly all this time, but suddenly he got in. Is he really the second in command here? Suddenly Kang Kai loudly told HWA Ran that he is strong. Da Young got scared and thought about what is wrong with this high school student. The flame warrior smiled and told Kang Kai that he was passing. Da Young did not understand what was happening and looked at Tan Nai and HWA Ran because the head stood up and told everyone that the interview was completed. Tan Nai called him master and panicked. The head began to leave, and she ran after him and told them to wait a little. 
The door to the room closed, and HWA Ran quickly walked down the corridor, and Tanai asked him to wait, because this is impossible. He asked her why this couldn't be done. Kinkai told them that he was strong. She asked him not to joke, and told him that trainees must pass 12 tests, including physical and mental tests, because this is an order from the headquarters. She understands that he has his own vision of the situation, but newcomers accepted in this way will not be approved. HWA Ran rubbed his chin with his hand and told her that she was right, and she agreed with it. He gave her a thumbs up and told her they would do things differently. Then he tossed her a yellow card with the company crest on it. It was a yellow craft card. He told her that he didn't get enough sleep because he was preparing for the seminar and was tired, so he couldn't go. Tanai looked at him with concern and said that the order was from the reception headquarters. But she didn't finish because HWA Ran told her to send the recruits to the yellow one. Meanwhile, Kang Kai and Da Young sat humbly in the interview room. Tanai couldn't believe his words. What is he talking about? He told her that they had been accepted and were already heroes, because if they succeeded, then the headquarters would definitely be convinced. HWA Ran asked her if she liked his plan. He laughed, and Tanai was clearly angry and therefore shouted at him to stop. They can die. First he accepts him without any tests, and then he sends him to yellow. There must be a limit to his jokes. HWA Ran smiled and looked at her angrily, his eyes glowing red. She got scared and looked at the floor, and then called him master. He smiled as if nothing had happened just now and told her that she could warn Poong soon just in case. She didn't understand what he meant, and he told her that's what they would do. Tanai looked at him intensely and called him by name, and then asked him what he was up to. He walked down the corridor further, and his mouth and eyes looked ominous and glowed red after some time in the office. Da Young asked her what kind of extermination of villains they were talking about. Does he really want to say that they were accepted and immediately sent on a mission? A man in glasses and in a uniform with the company's coat of arms answered him in the affirmative. He looked tired, but Da Young was excited and sweated. He closed his eyes and sighed sadly, and then told him that now he understood who they were. HWA Ran only asked them two questions, besides, they don't look at education and experience and only want people with good physical attributes. Now he is definitely sure. He asked the man if this was an illegal gang. Da Young began to pick his ear with his finger and told the man that he was leaving because he needed a job, but not this kind. The man with glasses tissed in a calm voice and told Kang Kai to bring his seal tomorrow to sign the contract. He continued to tell him that they had four main insurances, an annual salary of 3D200, and an additional performance bonus, and then asked him if he agreed. Kang Kai looked serious, and Da Young was surprised and said that he agrees. The man told him that he was just talking about that. But he was interrupted by Da Young, who told him that he had been silent. In a few minutes, they approached the supply room, and Da Young asked the man why they came here. He told him that he would give them clothes for transformation. The room seemed to smell bad because they both had their hands over their noses and the man had a mask on his face. He asked him if that was what they called the robe. The man told him that he could say that and then he took out clothes for them and told them to put them on. King Kai wore a black suit and Da Young wore a red suit. The blonde said that he had seen similar costumes on TV, on the Power Rangers. Everything was covered in dust and he asked the man if these were really their work clothes. A worker with glasses wrote something in his notebook and asked them if the size of their clothes was right for them. The man had teeth sticking out like a rabbit's, and in his hands was a carrot-shaped handle. Kang Kai held his pants with his hands and told him that he didn't have a belt. The man looked at him and told him that the belt was lost, and then began to look for it. A couple of minutes later, Kang Kai stood in full uniform, and the man was looking for something again. The box contained blue laser guns from the year 2001. He told them that it was dangerous to shoot people with these, so it was better not to use these guns if possible. Da Young picked up one gun and asked the worker if it was a toy. The man with glasses continued to write something down in his notebook while Kang Kai examined the gun with interest. A company employee told them that there was a store on the ground floor of the building and that they should buy batteries for the gun there. Da Young was surprised and asked him that batteries are really needed for a gun. The man told him that it was and that the gun needed two ah batteries. King Kai and Da Young stood motionless and waited for further instructions from the man, so he turned to them and told them that they could go. They silently looked at the worker and after a couple of minutes found themselves outside the building. The street was noisy and people were walking everywhere. 
They approached the road and Dai Young asked Kang Kai what to do next. The little girl looked at them and started waving her arms while the woman next to her tried to calm her down. All the people looked back at them because they were in strange costumes. Da Young closed his eyes and put his hand on his head and then told Kang Kai that the man could tell them where exactly to go. Suddenly his phone vibrated and he took it out. Kang Kai looked at the phone screen with interest and Da Young told him that a message had arrived from the company. He told him that the message looked like it was sent by scammers and that it made him feel bad. The message said that they had a goal. They need to try not to harm other people or destroy public property, and if there is a problem on the mission, they need to immediately contact the person in charge of the first department. The sender will trust and wait for their response. Telephone address for inquiries park near Lake Sodok Gunarami. Dayang couldn't believe it. Are they serious? Do they need to exterminate the villains? He asked Kang Kai if he had received a message from the company. A high school student told him that he did not have mobile internet and only used Wi-Fi. Dayong looked at his phone screen again and told him that they needed to go, and they would deal with everything once they arrived at their destination. Suddenly, he noticed that the message contained a picture of a pink toy bear. Dayong recognized the bear and told Kang Kai that it was Chip. This is a cute blogger who makes videos, and he sometimes watches Chip. He had over 2 million subscribers. He asked Kang Kai that the company was really offering them to get rid of a simple blogger. Will Chip be at Siodok Gunarmi Lake Park? He frowned and decided to see how they could get there, and then he opened his mouth wide and was surprised. It takes an hour and a half to walk there, it's very far. He asked Kang Kai if he had money, but he told him that he had no money, and Da Young remained silent. A couple of minutes later, a taxi was driving along the road at high speed. The taxi driver asked them why they were artists. After all, they had such interesting clothes. Da Young felt awkward and told him that they were indeed artists. After that, he covered his face with his hand and asked Kang Kai what he was doing with his life, doing these things at 30 years old. And he didn't finish the thought because the high school student told him not to cry. Da Young frowned and then turned sharply to him and asked him who was crying here. He leaned over to Kang Kai and loudly told him not to look at him arrogantly just because he was doing such things at his age. Kang Kai told him that he did not intend to do this, and after that Da Young apologized to him. The blonde made a dissatisfied face and told the high school student that schoolchildren should study, and then asked him what he forgot here. Kang Kai told him that he was bad at school, and Da Young was surprised. Kang Kai looked serious and told him that he wanted to become the best. Da Young didn't understand anything at all and asked him if he really wanted to become the best. Kang Kai answered him in the affirmative with a serious face, and so he asked him if he really wanted to become a boss. The high school student told him that he didn't care who it was, and that's why Da Young looked at him with incomprehension. Kang Kai told him that he wanted to become the best at something so that everyone knew about him, absolutely everyone. He remembered the woman, she was covered in blood and smiling, and then his face turned gray, and he told him that he wanted to become the best at any cost. Da Young opened his eyes wide and thought that the atmosphere had deteriorated sharply, and now he was embarrassed. Does he really want to become the best and gain popularity in such a place? Is he too stupid for a high school student? He looked at Kang Kai warily and thought that at first he thought he was a normal guy, and then he chuckled and looked out the car window. Da Young thought that he was just an annoying child. Meanwhile, Kang Kai watched him with confusion. After some time, they arrived at the park. He got out of the taxi and Kang Kai thanked Dai Young for paying for the taxi. The blonde looked worriedly at the screen of his phone and then told him not to worry about it. He looked at his bank account, where there was very little money left, and then he told Kang Kai that now they need to find out what kind of work this is and since they came here, they need to walk together. They passed by a food stand and Dai Young told him that it looked like there was a festival going on in the park. There were food courts everywhere and a lot of people walking around the park, so he told Kang Kai that it all looked like fun. He looked around and asked him how they could find Chip in such a vast area. Suddenly, he saw a crowd of people and asked what all these people were doing here. Is there really some kind of meeting here? People were smiling and clearly waiting for someone. Suddenly, Da Young saw Chip standing on the stage. He said that he had found their target. Chip put his finger up and told people he was coming, and then he greeted everyone loudly. A crowd of people screamed with joy, and someone even filmed it on their phone. The presenter in glasses and a blue jacket said into the microphone that in honor of the 12th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations, Chip the Bear from Narlac had arrived to have fun at the festival. 
Chip waved his arms on stage, and then showed the piss sign and asked the crowd of people that they had all really come to the park to look at him. He thanked everyone loudly again. A crowd of people screamed that they loved him and that he was cute. After some time, an autograph session was organized. Chip took a photo with a little girl, and the presenter continued to say something into the microphone. The bear patted the girl on the head and called her by name Su Hyun, and then told her that he would believe that she would become a pilot. The girl thanked him and smiled widely. Su Hyun approached her father, and Chip told her that they would meet again when she fulfilled her dream. The girl agreed and said goodbye to the pink bear, and then waved her hand to him. After that, Da Young and Kang Kai approached Chip. The presenter said that these were the last people and asked them to approach Chip. The pink bear told them that their costumes were cool and Da Young greeted the blogger. They stood next to Chip on both sides to take a photo. Da Young smiled and showed the piss sign with his hand, and Kang Kai, as always, stood with a serious face and showed class with his finger. After they took photos, Chip asked Da Young if they were part of the event preparation team. And then he praised them for doing a good job and told them that now they could enjoy the festival. Da Young awkwardly rubbed the back of his head with his hand and told him that they were here for a different reason. Chip was surprised, and then the blonde told him that they were trainees' heroes, and then apologized to him and asked him if he would allow himself to be exterminated. Suddenly the pink bear turned red and screamed with joy, and then told them that they had finally arrived. They were so late. Da Young didn't understand what was happening and looked at the blogger in surprise. Chip suddenly became nervous and told them that he was a secret messenger for the heroes and he needed to give them the necessary items. Da Young asked him what subjects he was talking about. Chip asked the producer if he could be free. The man answered him in the affirmative and praised him for doing a good job. The bear came out beyond the park fence and waved at them and then told them to follow him. Da Young immediately agreed with Chip and followed him and then asked him that the word extermination is really a password. He immediately thought that this was all strange. They followed Chip and Da Young asked him what kind of items he should give them. The bear told them that if he talks about objects, it will not be interesting. These are must-haves for hero trainees. They continued to follow Chip and he told them that he hid it so that no one could steal it. Da Young completely trusted Chip and asked him that does the blogger always help the heroes. He answered him in the affirmative and then showed him the class sign and told him that the heroes were wonderful. Da Young told him that they hadn't done anything yet, but still thanked him for his nice words. Chip pointed his finger into a narrow alley and told Mr. Pinchuhiro that the objects were hidden there. Da Young asked him about the fact that it was in the trash can. They walked up to the trash can and Chip started to open it, and then he told him that he hid everything well and asked him if he liked this place. After all, then no one would have guessed about it. Da Young told him that he was right. All this time, Kang Kai stood behind them. The blonde leaned over to look and asked Chip what was there. After all, everything looks as if there is only garbage inside. Suddenly, Chip hit Da Young so hard that he flew into the air and blood gushed out of his body. Kang Kai's eyes widened in surprise, and Da Young couldn't believe it. The bear's eyes glowed red, and he swung again, then grabbed Kang Kai's face. He hit it against the wall, and then continued to hold it and said that it was funny. Da Young was lying on the ground, covered in blood, and Pick asked them what could be in the trash can besides garbage. He laughed evilly and told them that the trash can would only contain trash. Da Young couldn't move and just lay on the ground, his eyes expressing fear. King Kai looked at the bear with wide open eyes, and so he asked him why he was looking at him. His face became completely different. He had a huge mouth with fangs and smiled horribly, and then asked King Kai if he was surprised. The veins in Peek's arms swelled, and he told them that it was very difficult for him, because he was very hungry. He asked Kang Kai if he knew how difficult it was to hold back in front of a huge crowd of people. His eyes opened wide, he looked scary, and he told him that heroes are a completely different manner. Kang Kai tried to take the gun that was attached to his pants, and was eventually able to take it. But Peek sharply grabbed his hand and told him not to twitch just like that, because he would be sorry to immediately eat Kang Kai completely. He took his hand and put it to his huge mouth, and then asked him that he could try a piece first. Pike put his hand in his mouth and blood gushed out. Kang Kai shouted to him that he would kill him. But he didn't finish the word because the bear was squeezing his mouth with his hand. Pick was pleased and told him that it was very tasty. Kang Kai was shocked, his eyes gradually closing. The bear smiled and asked him if he was already unconscious. And then he asked him for forgiveness because he could not do anything about it. Pike's eyes became completely crazy, and he told him that this was just the beginning. 
Suddenly the bear looked to the side. Kang Kai hit him. Peek's body was crumpled at the point of impact, and he moved away from it a little. He coughed in pain and thought, what is this? Rana Peek glowed yellow. He was surprised and frightened. Kang Kai stood opposite him with his hand torn off. He looked brave and wasn't going to give up just like that. Kang Kai looked at him, his eyes full of hatred. Pike got angry and called him a stupid bug. He grabbed him by the face again and then punched him with all his might. Kang Kai flew into the wall and then Peek shouted to him that he had been planning to have fun with him for a long time, but now he would just eat him whole. He opened his mouth wide and wished himself bon appetit. But Peek suddenly stopped because a strange object appeared in front of his mouth. It glowed with a blue light. Standing in front of Kang Kai was a man wearing a black cloak and long green hair. The man curled his lips in displeasure and called Peek disgusting. The bear's tongue touched the man with green hair, and so he leaned over a little. Peek thought that he couldn't move. Who is this man? The cloaked man stood in front of Kang Kai with a calm face, and in his hands was a strange glowing object. Suddenly his eyes opened wide and Pike did not understand what was happening, and then flew away from them several meters. He was unhappy about being hit and called the man a fool, and then asked him who he was. The man in the cloak slowly walked towards Pike and asked him who he thought he was. His eyes showed no emotion, and he told him that he was a hero. This man was Yong Poong. He was the captain of the first squad, the second of the eight gates, and his nickname was the Wind Elf. Pike thought that this was already understandable. Does he think he's asking him because he doesn't know? The bear smiled ominously and thought that Yong Poon was very different. But he didn't finish his thought because he saw the hero walking towards him, and a dark green light appeared around him. Young Pun's eyes seemed to light up with hatred, and Pick thought that he was different from those children. The bear pointed his finger at him and told him to wait. Narlak has a peace treaty with humanity. Did he forget about it? Young Poong asked what kind of peace treaty he could talk about. This is arrogance. Peek was scared, and next to them on the ground lay Da Young, who was covered in blood. The hero asked him if he was really telling him all this after he had already seen everything that was happening. Kang Kai sat with his arms severed against the wall. Yang Pun straightened his long hair with his hand. There was a seal in the form of a triangle, and he told him that he didn't care about this situation because he would kill him anyway. Peek saw the seal on his hand and his eyes widened in fear, and then he suddenly took off. The bear tried to get away from there and thought that it was dangerous. After all, the tattoo on Yang Poon's left hand is definitely a trigram, and he's one of those guys. Eight trigrams are the stage of initial cosmogenesis in the view of Chinese philosophy. The eight Gua trigrams are used in Taoist cosmology to represent the fundamental principles of existence. A trigram is a special Gua sign, consisting of three Yao lines, solid or broken. All possible combinations of three Yaos form eight trigrams. Peek quickly jumped on the roofs of buildings and thought that he had to run. After all, if he doesn't escape, he will become a corpse. Peek was very tense, but suddenly Yang Pun appeared in front of his face. He hit the bear with great force, causing it to fall to the ground. Peek's body was covered in wounds, and his eye was swollen, and he told the hero to wait. They attacked him themselves, and he was simply scared. He tried to persuade Yang Poong not to kill him, and told him that he would surrender. Yang Poong looked at him with confusion, and asked him why he should give up. They will kill him anyway. Peek was shocked. How can he be killed? He shouted to the hero that if he gives up, then the right thing to do would be to save his life and re-educate him because it would be fair. Yang Pung laughed and asked him what does it mean to re-educate. Peek froze in fear, and the hero called him a fool and everything around him began to glow blue. He waved his fan and a huge stream of air fell on the peak. It was a windy flow, stage two. Yang Pung waved his fan again and used the wind god power technique. Pike screamed in pain. The hero's eyes lit up yellow, and he smiled ominously, and the bear screamed and asked for help. Meanwhile, Da Young was still lying on the ground, watching with wide eyes. He was shocked and thought, what kind of person is this? Yang Poong smiled and continued to hit Peek. He looked like a demon. Da Young thought that he really is a hero. His eyes began to gradually close. Pike thought that he needed to restrain himself, because he would not be able to regain this appearance if he reincarnated. He clenched his teeth in pain and thought about being bigger. And he did not finish the thought, but then opened his mouth which glowed with a purple light. Peek said that he could no longer hold back. Young Pun did not understand what was happening, and everything around him glowed purple. Pike's hand became completely different. Now he had huge claws. His body changed color, and he screamed loudly. 
Pike opened his mouth wide, he began to transform into another creature. This made it windy and so Yang Pun tried to shield himself from the wind with his hands. He told Peak that the real one had finally appeared. The Peak became huge, this was his final phase, he was a yellow stage monster. The monster told the hero that he fought well. Young Poong stood calmly in front of him, and Peek continued to tell him that he recognizes his strength, but now it is better for him to give up. The hero closed his eyes, blue energy levitated around him, and the monster told him that in this form no one could defeat him. The Peek really looked terrifying in addition, it was several times larger than Yang Pun. Peek had a human-like body, but his face was like an animal. Suddenly he opened his eyes wide and looked at his body, and then asked the hero why his side was burning. Pike remembered Kang Kai because he was the one who punched him in the side. He asked if this was the blow of that little boy with a cactus for a hairstyle. His side was still glowing yellow, and he thought that this was nonsense. While Pick was thinking, Yong Pun was already next to him. He raised his hand and wanted to slam the hero, but he dodged. Yong Poon levitated in front of the monster and suddenly Peek laughed, and then told him that he had a small problem, but you can ignore it, because his body has become stronger anyway. Yang Pun looked at him like he was a fool inside. Peek told him that he had revealed his true nature, then he would not leave here alive. Yang Pun calmly walked towards the monster with a blue light glowing around him. His eyes were closed, and Peek continued to tell him that even if he died, he would take him with him to hell. The hero still continued to walk towards him with a calm look, and then the monster shouted to him that he would tear him into small pieces. Yang Pun was right in front of Pike's face, and his claws were right at the hero's head. But suddenly the monster screamed in pain. Suddenly his mouth was torn into two parts. It was a windy current, stage 6. Pick's entire body was torn into many small pieces, and Yang Pun calmly stood on the ground with an open fan in his hands. The hero used the final technique of expounding the law of wind and Peek screamed in pain again, while Yang Pung began to leave the scene with his eyes closed. He walked towards where the recruits were lying. After a couple of minutes, he asked Tanai how they were. He was sitting next to Kang Kai with a computer and various devices. Tanai told Young Poong that his numbers were unstable, but the worst was over and cell regeneration was being carried out on his right arm. There was a strange white device on Kang Kai's severed arm, and Tanai told Young Poong that with such blood loss he could have died. Kang Kai furrowed his eyebrows and sweated because he was in pain, and she told the captain that he was doing well. Yang Poon looked at Kang Kai disinterestedly and thought that he was completely ordinary, and then remembered seeing that Peek was holding him against the wall. But he was ordinary until the moment when his hand was bitten off. He remembered how Kang Kai's eyes lit up and his fist glowed yellow before he punched Peek. Yang Poon called Tanai and asked her if there was more crafting nearby. She looked at her watch, which was broadcasting a screen in the air, and told him that no one else had been registered besides Chip. He looked disappointed and asked her again, and she told him that there was still one craft. She looked at the map and told him that it was a little far from here, but it was still there and the craft color was green. Meanwhile, the green craft attacked a man. Tanai told Yang Poon that it changed its state five hours ago and is half a monster, but it is under the jurisdiction of the second department. In addition, the monster is green, which means that the master does not have to do this. He told her not to give the monster to the second squad, so Tanai became alarmed and asked him what he meant. Suddenly the captain threw Kang Kai over his shoulder and told her that he was moving there. She was surprised, and he asked her how much time was left until the hand was completely regenerated. Tanai was confused and told him that there were about 20 minutes left, and then asked him why he needed this information. Young Poom continued to hold Kang Kai on his shoulder and told her that he wanted to check if there was anything interesting about their newcomer or not, and then he smiled sinisterly. Some time later, the man's eyes gradually opened, he saw a half-monster in front of him, who told him to get up. He repeated over and over again that Mr. Hero should get up. The man opened his eyes and saw in front of him a monster that looked like a man. The monster's eyes were black and yellow and of different sizes, and its body was blue. Kang Kai lay under him, and the monster greeted him, and then asked him if he had woken up. Kang Kai looked ahead in fear, and the monster stuck out its tongue and congratulated him on waking up. The half-monster told him that who would have thought that they would meet. He had, of course, heard that a hero would appear if he reached this stage, but he couldn't believe it. The monster licked his lips and told Kang Kai that he was very touched by this. It was a green craft-grade half-monster. 
He pointed his finger at a small passage under the bridge and told him that he just wanted to kill the company employees who were bullying him. That's why it all happened that way. Apparently, he also used to be an employee of this company because he was wearing a torn white shirt and dress pants. The half-monster told Kang Kai that being stronger than others was so exciting, and so he killed a few more people. He leaned towards the hero's face and said that he so wanted to test his new powers, which is why he hoped for the hero's manifestation. Suddenly, he pointed his finger at Kang Kai's stomach and told him that it was quite absurd to just lie down here and sleep. On his stomach was a piece of paper with the inscription that all monsters must die. The half-monster pointed his finger at the piece of paper and said that it was even more absurd to fall asleep with such an inscription on his stomach. Kang Kai looked at the inscription and did not understand what was happening, and the monster told him that he did not know whether the hero considered him strong or underestimated him. And he didn't finish the thought. Kang Kai looked at him with panic in his eyes, and the half-monster swung his hand at him and said that this was terribly infuriating him. He wanted to hit Kang Kai. But he jumped away, and so the monster only hit the ground. The hero stood on his hands and feet like an animal, and thought about what happened. He remembers exactly that before that he was attacked by a scary-looking chip and ate his hand. Kang Kai looked at his bitten hand, but it was still there. He was surprised and said that his hand had really grown back. Meanwhile, the half-monster jumped and ended up on top of Kang Kai. He pulled his hand towards him and hit him again. But the hero dodged the blow, his eyes wide open in fear. The monster looked at him and asked him why he seemed so weak. After that, he sharply grabbed Kang Kai by the head with his huge hand, but the hero clenched his hand into a fist and punched the monster in the stomach. The half-monster first froze and then loudly said that Kang Kai was annoying him and called him a weakling. He grabbed him by the head again and hit him on the asphalt and then asked him how he could be neglected like that. The monster swung both hands and hit the hero again, and then shouted that they had sent him some weakling, and it was very annoying. The monster in the past was called Cow. Kang Kai seemed to have run out of charge, his strength was running out. Cow wiped his mouth with his hand and said that he understood everything. Maybe it's not a weak hero, but he's just too strong. The hero was lying on the ground, he was covered in blood. Suddenly, Young Pun appeared next to the monster, he looked upset. Cal looked at his huge hands and said that his theory sounded plausible. Suddenly he noticed the captain and got scared, and Yang Pun sighed sadly. He said that it seemed like it was just a coincidence. Cal got mad and asked the captain who he was. How did he get here? Does he want to die? Yang Pung looked at Kang Kai and was surprised, and then said that he got up. The monster also looked towards the newcomer. Kang Kai stood in front of them. He glowed with a red and yellow light. It looked like fire. Kang Kai looked warlike and menacing, his eyes glowing red with anger. It seemed as if his strength was being restored again. Kao was surprised and opened his mouth wide, and then asked if he really survived his blow. Suddenly he felt pain in his body, his skin was glowing with a yellow light from within. The monster screamed that he didn't like it. He raised his hand and told Kang Kai that this time he would definitely kill him. The recruit's strength was gradually restored, he was like a telephone battery. Suddenly, Cao screamed in pain as his arm swelled. Kang Kai stood motionless in place, and the monster hit him. They were delighted with their new power and said that it was very exciting. Cao looked at Kang Kai and was surprised. Could he really withstand his blow now? The recruit still stood motionless. He did not even move away from the monster's blow. His strength was completely restored, and that's why Kang Kai looked crazy. He screamed, his hand glowed yellow, and he hit Cao with all his might. The blow was so strong that part of the monster's body was torn off and he flew away. King Kai looked like a demon and Yang Pung was shocked by it. The captain saw how the blow pierced the monster's body and then he collapsed to the ground. King Kai fell to his knees from exhaustion and then Yang Pung approached him. He looked at the recruit who looked serious. His face was covered in blood. The captain smiled and told him that they had not had such curious newcomers for a long time. Kim Kai's eyes were burning, and he suddenly asked the captain if he was Kim Kyung Ho. Jong Ho is a Korean rock singer with long hair. Yong Pung clearly did not like this comparison and got angry. After that, an explosion occurred in the place where they were. Some time later. It was night, but the whole city was lit up from various signs on the buildings. On the wall of the building, there was a sign in the form of an emoji of a devil with horns and green eyes, and the name Utopia was written below. Apparently, it was a nightclub. There was a crowd of people inside the club. Everyone was dancing and having fun to the music. 
A beautiful girl in a top and sunglasses was dancing. There were chains hanging around the DJ's neck and a large watch on his hands. People raised their hands in the air with joy. In the other room, the music was heard less. A man in a classic suit, but with a ram's head, was holding a tablet in his hand. He said that in Utopia, everyone is a partner who shares the same dream and is always confident in each other. He looked at the tablet screen and said that this incident had raised some doubts among his superiors. The Ram Man read the news that a video hosting star had gone missing after the festival and therefore a police investigation had been launched. He was reading an article written by journalist Choyo. At Lake Narmi Park, Chip from Narlak participated in a festival celebrating the 12th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations with Narlak. A huge crowd of people gathered that day, and the festival itself ended without incident, but after the end, no one could find Chip or contact him, so the agency reported him missing. The Ram Man asked if this was also part of the plan. The man who was sitting at the table opened the lid of the tray. There was meat on the tray, and the man asked the Ram Man if he had ever tried to cook cut meat right away. They were in a huge hall with a red floor. The man was sitting on a large chair, and in front of him stood a long table. There was a cook on the left, and in the middle of the room there was a ram man. The man told him that if he started cooking, lured by the bright red color of the meat and wanted to try it as quickly as possible, he would be very disappointed because the contracted muscles and lactic acid made it impossible for even the best cooks to cook the meat properly. The man cut the meat with a knife and asked the ram man how then to enjoy the delicious meat. The man cut off a small piece of meat and said the answer was to just wait. This person was a beautiful woman with red hair. She had blue eyes and her lips were wearing blue lipstick. She continued to tell the ram man to wait until the enzymes and microorganisms broke down and destroyed the hardness of the meat. In fact, she was talking about the hero organization. She told him that the meat should be given time and only then. But she didn't finish the thought and smiled, and then grabbed her face with her hand and pulled the skin of her face. The ram man looked at her, and she told him that then he would be able to enjoy the best taste. Underneath her human mask was a huge mouth with fangs, and she told him to just wait. Sometime later, King Kai suddenly opened his eyes. He was lying on a hospital bed, and there was an Roman four next to him. He sat up and remembered the half-monster and peak, and his eyes went wide before he looked at his hand. There was a small bandage on his palm. After a couple of minutes, he opened the door of the room and went out into the corridor. He looked around and asked if this was a company. Kang Kai walked further down the corridor and looked through the open door. In the other room stood Young Poon and Da Young. The blonde bowed before the captain and told him that he wanted to leave. His face showed horror, and he told him that he would never have agreed to this job if he had known how it would be. He won't stand it because it's impossible. He looked at the floor and remembered Peek, and then told Young Poon that it was too terrifying. Dae Young raised his head and looked at the captain and then told him what else. But he didn't finish the thought because Young Poon looked scary. He looked at Dae Young with pity. The blonde remembered how the captain smiled evilly when he fought with Peek. Young Poon asked him what else he wanted to say. Dae Young became nervous and lowered his head again, and then thought that compared to the villain he mentioned earlier, the captain looks even more terrifying and he is a real monster. Young Poon looked at him with contempt and told him to leave. The captain opened his eyes wide and told him that it would be better if he let him die, because he would be more useful dead, and then he called him a non-entity. He left the room, and Dai Young sadly looked at the floor. King Kai was still standing in the corridor. Apparently, he heard their dialogue. Suddenly, Tanai called the master, but he told her that he was leaving. She thanked him for his work and wished him a good trip on the way back, but Young Pun rudely told her to leave him alone. He went ahead and told her to lecture the yellow-haired coward and then send him home. Tanai ran after him and did not understand what he meant. The captain asked her if Da Young was really a clown. Maybe it's because she conducted the interview. Although they don't care who they choose, why should they waste their time on such a weakling? He furrowed his brows and asked her what she was thinking when she took it. Tanai remembered HWA Ran's words and then apologized to the captain and pursed her lips. After that, Young Poon turned away and asked her how Kang Kai was feeling. She was surprised and told him that she thought that his injuries were serious, but as soon as she entered his room he... And she didn't finish her thought, because she remembered how Kang Kai told her that he would continue to work for them. He told her that he would not give up and quit this job. The captain walked along the corridor, and then smiled and said that he knew that this would happen. 
Tanai did not understand who the captain was talking to, and suddenly a worker who looked like a rabbit appeared behind her. The man quickly ran to the master and then told him that they had a big problem. He urgently needs to watch the news one Tanai was frightened by surprise. Young Pung turned around and looked at him and then asked what news he was talking about. The news showed the scene of Chip's murder. The reporter said that stuffing and pink fur were scattered everywhere. These found remains apparently belonged to Chip, who disappeared the night after the festival. The TV presenter spoke with a serious face about how Chip, who was loved for his sweetness and kindness, had become the victim of a terrible crime. Police said they would conduct a thorough investigation to see if anyone had a motive to harm Chip, a Narak resident. The TV presenter loudly said that next year will be the 13th anniversary of the Era of Peace, and those who cannot adapt to this are the villains. Those who rationalize their methods through barbaric violence are villains. Those who want to destroy the world are villains. The worker and Tanai watched the news on TV in panic, while the captain stood silently. The TV presenter shouted that the people who killed Peak are the real villains. Young Poong opened his eyes wide. Tanai shouted to them in a panic that this was not good. The captain swung his hand sharply towards her, but she dodged his blow and screamed. Young Poong asked them why he sees the consequences of their negligence on the news. His eyebrows furrowed and his pupils shrank with anger, and he told them that it was all because they didn't do their job properly. Why should he even worry about this? Tanai cried and asked him for forgiveness. Suddenly, HWA Ran entered the room and asked Young Poong if his hysteria was getting worse. And then he suggested that he undergo a test for neuropathy. He was wearing a long white robe and smiling widely. HWA Ran asked him if he knew where his pain was. Young Pun looked at the head with displeasure and asked him what he meant. HWA Ran asked him if this is a leader's responsibility. He called him Pung's son and asked him that he was not mistaken, was he? He smiled widely, trying to look friendly. The captain closed his eyes and told HWA Ran that he had already told him that the head should not call him that, and then opened his eyes and told him that if he had to remind HWA Ran about this again, he would take him away life is in process. The head again specifically called him Pung's son and asked him why he was so formidable. And then I apologized to him because he said it again. After that, he opened his eyes wide and smiled ominously and asked Yang Pung about where he wants to kill him. If, of course, he is capable of this. They looked at each other with hatred, but suddenly a man with a beard shouted at them to stop. A big, pumped-up man came into the room and asked them what they were doing here. Don't they understand what's going on? And yet they behave like this. This man's name was Chin Yul. He was the director of Heroes, the sixth of the eight trigrams, and his nickname was the Guardian of Heaven. He asked them if they were ashamed of themselves as heroes. H.W.A. Ran smiled and greeted the director, and Young Poon called the head a suck-up and asked him what he wanted to say. Ching Yul stood in front of the captain and asked him if he had seen the news and whether he understood the seriousness of the situation. Young Poon remained silent, and the director continued to say that the leader of the monsters had clearly reached his final stage of evolution, but what was found was his rejected piece, and this cannot be. He told everyone that Tan Nai is the most skilled specialist he has ever met, and he trusts her experience and knows that she does not make mistakes. She looked sadly at the floor. Ching Yul told them that their headquarters would deal with the noise from the news. Other than that, there was nothing to indicate that their company was involved in the incident. The government will also calm down sooner or later after making their statement, and no matter how unpleasant it is, they understand the importance of maintaining the balance of this era of peace. The director crossed his arms over his chest and said that he would take responsibility for the fate of the heroes. Young Poong asked him to stop and be honest, because this is not the real reason he is here. Chen Yol laughed and called him Peng's son, and then told him that he could not deceive the captain and he would silence him. After that, the director cheerfully told Tan Nai that he heard interesting news from H. Waring this morning. She was surprised and asked him what news he was talking about. Jiang Sol told her that apparently there was one promising trainee in the first branch of the hero program. H.W.A. Ran smiled and agreed with the boss, and then told him that he and Tan Nai carefully selected him. The chief continued to smile and asked Tan Nai if they really selected the recruits carefully. She looked away from him, but agreed with him. Chin Xiao crossed his arms over his chest and told them that he was interested in the newcomer who fought against Yellow and stood his ground, so he immediately ran to them. The director lit up with joy. Suddenly, he turned sharply to Tan Nai and told her that he had heard that they accepted him without even conducting a screening exam. 
She answered him in the affirmative, and so he told her that this could not be done, because there were clear instructions from the headquarters, and then asked her why they were ignoring this. She became sad and apologized to him, and HWA Ran told him that he would immediately bring Kang Kai to him. Young Poong stood with a dissatisfied face, as always, and so the director asked him what he had against it. The captain told him that he was only here on a part-time basis. The director smiled and told him that since he agreed, he could take him to the intern. Yang Poong looked at Chin Seol annoyed and asked him what he meant. The director told him that he had no work that afternoon and then asked him if he was right about that. The captain asked him what he was getting at, and then he told him to entrust this to someone else and he would not do it. The director told him that Yang Poon forgot that the tradition of the branch master helping the trainee is unique to the heroes because it is a way for the master to show that he personally selected and checked the trainee. The second, third, and fourth branches maintain this tradition, and it is his responsibility as the first branch master to do the same. Young Poon got angry and furrowed his eyebrows, and then asked the director if he was sure that he chose Kang Kai. He told Chin Seol that he remembered that it was a joint decision between him and the team, and let him go on his own. The director told him that HWA Rand's patients depend on him, and it would be irresponsible to take him away from them for long. HWA Rand smiled and told them that it was not only unfair to them, but also to their heroes. Chin Seol kept asking the captain if he was right, or is it wrong? Is he telling the truth? Yang Pun clenched his hands into fists and looked at them with hatred in his eyes. Some time later, the captain was driving the car, and Kang Kai was sitting in the passenger seat. Yang Pun was unhappy and said that he would kill them, someday he would kill them all. Kang Kai looked at him silently, and then the captain asked him why he didn't have a driver's license. Is it because he's a sociopath who can't do anything, just taking up space and taking up oxygen? Kang Kai told him that he was just a high school student, and then the captain rudely told him to shut up. He looked at Young Poong again and asked him if this was a test training. The captain told him that this was just nonsense, just a test to see if he was capable of becoming a hero in a couple of days. This is just a verbal test, and even a fool like him can pass it, and after that his work will be more interesting. Kang Kai continued to look at him, and so the captain continued to tell him that if he finished and returned, he would make sure that he had a good time. He laughed and smiled ominously, and Kang Kai asked him, how long will it take? Young Pun looked at him questioningly. Some time later, Du Jin was again covered in leaves from the bushes and smiling. He told Kang Kai that he seriously got a job in this competitive job market. It never ceases to amaze him. He closed his eyes, and blood flowed from his nose, and he told him that the bad thing was that he would not be able to see his beautiful smile for three whole days, and it would be difficult, but the high school student would have to overcome it. Kang Kai told his father that his nose was bleeding, and he asked him if he liked his new job. Is it worth his effort? The hero looked at his right hand and told him that everything was fine. Du Jin suddenly loudly told him that he could not work outside the home for so long, four days and three nights, he simply could not stand it. After that, he asked him where his inspector was. Is this really the guy? He looked at Young Poong, who stood calmly by his car and drank his drink. The captain noticed Du Jin's look and looked at him with displeasure, so he hid in the bushes out of fear and asked Kang Kai if his inspector was giving out private loans. He looks familiar. Kang Kai calmly looked at the captain and then told his father that he was leaving. Du Jin was upset that their meeting went so quickly and smiled sadly and then smiled and wished him good luck and Kang Kai gave him a thumbs up. Young Poong and the newcomer got back into the car and the captain asked him if he was finished. They are leaving. Kang Kai told him that he needed to go to one more place, and therefore the captain was unhappy. He looked at him and asked if he would really have to babysit him again. Some time later, Da Young opened the door and asked who it was. He was surprised when he saw Kang Kai in front of him, so he asked him what was going on. Who is he? Apparently Da Young has lost his memory. Kang Kai bowed to him and quickly ran away from there. Da Young was confused and asked what it was just now, and then called Kang Kai a weirdo. Suddenly he noticed his hat, which he always wears, with money and a note that were lying by the door. The note said thank you for paying for the taxi. King Kai got back into the car and told Young Poong that he was ready. The captain looked into the side mirror of the car and saw Da Young in the reflection. He was holding his hat in his hands. The car was driving at great speed along the road. King Kai called out to the captain and so he asked him what he wanted to ask this time. The high school student thanked him for protecting him during the battle with Pike. 
Young Poon looked at Kang Kai with a calm expression and then looked away and told him to shut up. Some time later, it was great sunny weather. The large tall building sparkled in the sun's rays. There was an elevator inside. There were a lot of buttons with floors. The highest floor, apparently, was occupied by the headquarters of the Company of Heroes because an emblem was drawn on the button and it was written that there was limited access. A man named Lee Siak was the director of the Healing Heroes. He called young Poong Sunbi and told him that he was waiting for him. The captain called him bespectacled and greeted him. Lee Suk told him that twelve years had passed since he was last here. The captain asked him what was wrong with this. Why would he even visit this garbage dump? Lee Siak smiled artificially and told him that he would not have thought that someone from the first branch could utter such words. There was clearly tension between them and young Poon told him that, unlike him, a fool, he does not live like an animal in a cage. The director of the Healing Heroes told him that his personality remained as unpleasant as before. The captain asked him if he really wanted to die. Lee Siak looked at Kang Kai and asked young Poon if this was the intern he had heard about. He approached the newcomer and began to examine him, and then said that this was the first trainee brought by the first branch. Lee Siak told Kang Kai that it was surprising that an ordinary high school student like him joined them. He asked him if he understood correctly that his name was Kang Kai. Why does he want to join the heroes? The high school student with a serious face told him that his goal was to reach the top. Young Poong looked at him with dissatisfaction, and Lee Siak was a little surprised and said that he had assumed so. He looked at the big, muscular man in a classic suit and told him to take him to the exam room. The man told him that he would do so, and then asked Kang Kai to follow him. Young Poong walked towards the exit and waved to everyone, and then said that he was leaving, but Lee Siak called out to him. He told the captain that he had a special treat that he would like. This is a 93-year-old Ninkin's black tea from England. It's a rare blend that he won't find in Korea. He showed him the tin and asked Young Poong if he would like to have a cup of tea with him. The captain asked him why he should drink grass, and then Lee Siak said that he didn't want to. The director of hero connoisseurs told him that he expected such an answer because he knew that young Poong would say so. Lee Siak looked at him seriously and told him that that was why he came with this very thing. The captain turned to him and asked him if he really took the straw. Lee Siak tilted his head to the side and answered in the affirmative, and young Poong frowned and asked him what color the straw was. The director of hero connoisseurs opened his eyes wide and therefore looked like a madman and then answered him that the straw was yellow. After some time, young Poong drank his drink from a yellow straw. Lee Siak sat next to him on the next chair and drank tea, and then told him that it seemed that his taste for this drink had not changed. The captain told him that it was 10,000 times tastier than his grass. They continued to drink their drinks, and Lee Siak told him that this was their first meeting after the era of peace, and then asked him how he and HWA Rang were doing. Young Poong made a displeased face and told him that if he said that name again, he would kill him, and Lee Siak laughed and told him that he had not changed at all. The captain looked at him and asked what he was doing here. This is a useless playground created by the cunning of the director and the association of humanity. He made a blank face and asked Lee Siak why he had been working here for over ten years. After all, he was once known as an Ansi Shinsu conductor. The hero healer director calmly took a sip of his tea and asked him what he meant by useless, and then I asked him to express himself more acceptable because the rules and regulations here are very strict. Young Poong chuckled and smiled and then told him that he too had not changed at all. Lee Siak told him that it was still unexpected and he was surprised that a trainee from the first branch came to them, but he was even more amazed that the captain personally brought him here. Young Poong calmly continued to drink his drink, and the director asked him what happened to him. The captain chuckled again and asked him what he was hinting at. He didn't want to come here, but he was deceived by the old hero director and got him involved in this matter. He remembered Chen Yul's smiling face and told Lee Siak that he would kill this old fool someday. The hero healer director asked him if there was more to this situation, so the captain looked at him with displeasure and asked him what he meant. Lee Siok smiled and told him that he could not deceive him, and then asked him if the intern he brought was really interesting to him. Young Poong looked at the floor and told him that Kang Kai was intriguing. He remembered how the newcomer punched the half-monster. The captain smiled sinisterly and told him that he seemed a little suspicious. Lee Siok didn't understand what he was talking about, so he asked him what he meant. Young Poong threw a drink container at his head and told him that he was noisy, then stood up and walked towards the exit. 
He waved to Lee Siak and told him he was leaving. The Healer Hero director stood up and asked if their meeting was really that small. And then he called him cold, he said goodbye to him, and told him that the captain should not die. Yang Peng showed him the f and told him to go far away from him. The captain walked out of the room into the corridor and stretched. He yawned and was glad that he was gone, and then smiled and said that he needed to go home and watch the series he missed on video hosting. Suddenly he saw Kang Kai and asked him what he was doing here. The trainee told him that the committee told him to go home and he was disqualified. Yang Pung made a dissatisfied face and asked him what he meant. He just had to pass a basic test. He opened his eyes wide in surprise and asked him how one could be disqualified. Is he making fun of him? The man in the black suit told the captain that the problem was that Kang Kai didn't even have the minimum knowledge. Some time later, Chen Yol and Tan Nai stood motionless in surprise. The director asked the captain how can Kang Kai not have the minimum knowledge. Yang Pung turned sharply to the newcomer and asked him, what is six times three? Kang Kai panicked and then rubbed his cheek in thought. The director and Tan Nai were waiting for his answer, and Kang Kai asked them if he could use the notebook. They were shocked, and the captain called him a fool and loudly told him that the correct answer was 18. Kang Kai stood up straight and agreed with him. Young Poon continued to test his knowledge and asked him what is 6 times 3. Kang Kai told him that the answer was 17. Young Poon got even angrier and asked him what 4 times 7 is. The newcomer asked him if the answer was 12. The captain was extremely irritated and asked him what is 2 times 9. Kang Kai asked him if he himself knew the answers to these questions. Yang Poon got completely mad and shouted at him that the answer would be 18. Kang Kai raised his finger up as if he understood something and told him that the answer was indeed 18. The captain continued to shout 18. 18. Chen Xiao awkwardly rubbed his beard and told Ta Nai that this is surprising and it looks like Kang Kai doesn't have a basic understanding of school knowledge. The captain continued to shout and Ta Nai told the director that she was also very puzzled. Suddenly, Yang Pun exhaled loudly and took out his fan. He said Blade Storm is the second evolution, Tunnel Storm Strike. Suddenly, a window on the floor broke and everyone screamed. They started asking Yang Pun to calm down. The captain shouted that Kang Kai must die. In the evening of the same day, Chin Yul and Tan Nai stood on the roof of the building. She gave him a mug with a drink and so he thanked her. He asked her how the captain was feeling now. She told him that fortunately he calmed down and went home. They covered the window in the building with cardboard. Cheng Yul told her that they are reckless here, and it must be very difficult for her to work here. Tanai remembered the sinister faces of HWA Ran and Young Pung and thought that the problem is not only that they are reckless. The director told her that their new intern was quite intriguing, and she smiled and told him that she was surprised too. He told her that he was not talking about Kang Kai's knowledge. He remembered how he came to his room. Ching Yul told her that Kang Kai recently told him something very intriguing and now he knows why HWA Ran chose him. Tanai asked him if this was true. She remembered the menacing face of the head of the first department and looked sadly at the floor and the director continued to say that he was interested in something. She asked him what happened. Ching Yul told her that the chip monster class is yellow, so it is impossible for someone who is not a master to be approved for this mission and then asked her how then was a trainee able to do it. Tanai told him that it was her fault because she misjudged Chip because she thought he was cute and that's why she thought that an intern would be enough for the task. She asked him for forgiveness for letting him down and looked at the floor. The director looked at her seriously and then said that he understood her. Tanai asked him, isn't this strange? After all, until now, their approach was either quiet or a direct attack on them. But this time everything is different and she is sure that their approach has changed and then asked him why that is. Cheng Yul looked at the sunset and told her that for something like this to change or vary there must be a reason for the change. Tanai looked at him in surprise and he told her that he felt as if a freezing wind was blowing. Meanwhile, the sky above the Korean University building turned pink. The guy looked at the screen of his phone and read an article about Chip. He asked his neighbor if he had seen the news. The blonde man was sitting with headphones on and playing a computer video game. The guy with the glasses told him that Chip's fur was all torn, and it was creepy. Even in their time, there are still people who will stop at nothing, including riots, to get what they want from those they consider to be evildoers. He asked the guy about what fate awaits this country. A blonde man in a blue t-shirt with a bunny print told him that this did not concern him, and that he better do his schoolwork. 
The guy with glasses asked him that he really says this to him when he plays a video game. The blonde turned to him and then told him to shut up and that he would play all night. The guy with the glasses was called D. He asked the blonde if he wanted to eat chimic to gain strength. Chimic chicken and beer. The guy in the blue t-shirt told him that it had nothing to do with it at all, and so D asked him if he really wanted to. The blonde told him that he was going for the chimic, and so D opened the door and looked out into the corridor. Apparently, they were in a university dormitory. The guy with glasses shouted loudly for the muscle pig to order them chicken. He asked why he walked alone for so long. He had already been gone for several hours. Meanwhile, a huge guy in green shorts was looking at his laptop. He asked if this was true. There was news about Chip on the screen. Next to the monster was a photo of Da Young and Kang Kai from the festival. He said, does that mean he has to do it now? A little while later, it was sunset and a small residential building stood on the face. Da Young was watching a TV program and laughing. There was a funny scene on the TV screen. He was lying on the sofa and was engrossed in watching a TV show. He said that this cannot be. Does he even have a brain? This is hilarious. Suddenly his phone vibrated and so he picked it up. His mother called him and he put the phone back and then continued watching the TV show again. He laughed again and said that it was so funny that he was crazy about it. Suddenly someone's foot appeared to his right. He screamed in surprise. A girl came into the room, she looked menacing, and he lay down on the floor and covered his head with his hands and then howled in fear. The girl told him that she had caught him. She asked him if he really ignored their mother's call. Is TV more important to him than her? This girl was Da Young's sister. Her name was Jai Yu. He picked up his phone and asked her if someone had called him. He didn't even notice. Jai Yu told him not to pretend because she saw everything. She looked unhappy and crossed her arms over her chest and then told him that if he was unemployed, then at least he had the conscience to answer the phone. She asked him why she should tolerate all the people who constantly complain about him. If he ignores one more call, he will become a corpse. Da Young raised his hand to his head and told her that this won't happen again. Jai Yu chuckled and slammed the door sharply, and he told her that just because she had a job, that didn't justify her treating her brother so cruelly. He stood up and then asked if I could have something to eat. Jai Yu stood in her room and asked when he would start acting like a normal person. Suddenly she noticed a strange box, inside of which there was something the color of a rainbow. Da Young took a packet of chips and went back to the TV, and then asked where he stopped. Suddenly, Jai Yu kicked him in the back, and he screamed. He fell to the floor again, and chips were scattered near him. She asked him displeasedly how dare he enter her room without her consent. Did he want to die? Da Young told her that she told him to get out, so he went into her room. She shouted at him that then he should have limited himself to cleaning only. Jai Yu was holding a hero search flyer in her hand and asked him why he needed to mess with her things. She said that it was he who opened the box. Da Young rubbed his cheek with his finger and asked her what it was. What kind of heroes are the interns? He told her he was just curious because there was a letter there and he thought it might be the company she worked for. Da Young asked his sister if they were handing out flyers. The girl panicked and asked him what he meant. She got angry and told her brother that it was another company that was using their company name and so to clear things up they sent this sample flyer. She pointed at the advertisements and asked Da Young what kind of company could this be that does not pay attention to academic qualifications, experience, and age. Her brother told her that he thought it was very strange and asked her why her company distributed so many samples. Jai Yu leaned her body towards him and said that they are very careful in this matter. Da Young looked away and asked her if this was true. She grabbed a stack of rainbow flyers and headed towards the door. She asked why it was sent to their home. She can't stand it anymore, so she has to go and complain about it. She grabbed the doorknob and had a strange green and turquoise round sign on her sweater. Jai Yu told him not to even tell her that he was going to this interview. Da Young smiled and asked her what she was hinting at. He's not stupid. Da Young asked his sister what normal person would attend such suspicious events. He's not that desperate. Jai Yu closed her eyes in irritation and told him that she knew exactly who would do this and then asked him to make sure that he cleaned the house before she returned. He asked her to wait and asked if she would be staying here. Jai Yu asked her brother why she needed this. Da Young told her that he was hungry and asked her to give him $10. She slammed the door loudly and left, and Da Young said that it was just $10 and then called her greedy. Suddenly his phone rang and he picked it up. His sister transferred $10 to his card. Before that, in correspondence, she also transferred money to him, and he thanked her and told Jai Yu that he loved her. 
Da Young smiled and laughed, and then said that she was still kind. Suddenly his face changed, he looked to the side with uncertainty, and then picked up the leaflet. He looked at it and said it probably wasn't worth it because it really did sound weird. The flyer was written about recruiting intern heroes. Doesn't he have a job? Does he have no work experience? No education needed. No work experience needed. They are just looking for a strong person. There was a map at the bottom of the flyer. Da Young sat thoughtfully. He looked out the window. Meanwhile, Shai Yu was walking along the road and asked why they sent this to their home. She can't believe they expect her to spread this. What was the company thinking? She stopped and said that there was absolutely no chance that she would do this because she did not want to be associated with branches that did not have trainees. There was a strange round sign on the left sleeve of her sweater. Jai Yu was a trainee hero of the fourth branch. She took out her phone to call the company. Jai Yu said that this is simply incredible. She will contact the first thread to express her grievances against them. They answered the call and greeted her and then said that this was the first branch of the hero. Jai Yu greeted them and said that the trainee of the fourth branch was calling them. It turned out that a bot answered her call. It told her to press number one so she could connect to the company. Jai Yu pressed number one and then greeted the person who answered her call again. She asked the man if she called correctly and were they the heroes first? But she didn't have time to finish because it turned out that the bot answered her again. The bot told Jai Yu to select the desired service. First business consulting, second interview consulting, third another. She chose option one and said hello again, but Jai Yu was interrupted by the bot again. She had to enter her social security number and phone number. Jai Yu entered all the necessary information, and the bot told her that the number she entered was incorrect. She screamed with anger and threw the phone on the asphalt. She looked serious and said that she would not put up with this and would go to the company in person. Some time later, Dai Young was in the computer club. Then he ate in a cafe, and at that time his phone rang. He looked at the screen of his phone, there was a message, it said that he apologized, but Da Young was denied an interview. They thanked him for his interest and wished him a good day. The cafe was very noisy, he thanked the employees of the establishment and went outside. Da Young hugged himself by the shoulders and said that it was still cold outside. The TV show will start soon, and so he needs to go home. Suddenly he crashed into a man and fell to the ground, and his hat fell off his head. A huge, muscular man in green shorts asked him if he was okay. Da Young rubbed his hand over his head and told him about his head. But he didn't finish the thought because the man apologized to him and asked if he was okay. Da Young replied in the affirmative and then raised his hat. He remembered how Kang Kai came to his house to give him his hat and money and then thought that he didn't even remember how the high school student managed to return his lost hat to him. Who was that high school student? Da Young was confused, and the man in shorts asked him again if he was really okay. He stood up and put on his cap, and then told him that he was fine and asked the man not to worry about him. The man told him that he was a very kind person, and Da Young awkwardly thanked him and turned in the other direction. He put his hands in the pockets of his pants and said that if this man apologizes like that, then he cannot show him anything. Da Young noticed that the man was very muscular and asked if he was a bodybuilder. He was walking home and said that the stranger was of quite a large build, and behind him was this man. He was wearing a black t-shirt and his hair was red. Some time later on the same day. It was already dark outside, and Da Young sat calmly on the sofa and stretched his hands up, and then said that it was great. He watched the TV show again and said that it was really super. Da Young opened a bag of chips and laughed, and then said that they always make him smile and laugh, no matter how many times he watches it. Suddenly, he looked at the clock that was hanging on the wall and noticed that it was already quite late. Da Young took his phone and pouted his lips with displeasure and then said that Jai Yu talked to him today as if she was going to return home earlier than usual and then asked why she hadn't come yet. Suddenly, someone knocked hard on the apartment door. He was surprised and then went to open the door and said that his sister got drunk again and her behavior changes dramatically when she is drunk. They kept knocking on the door, so he told her what he heard. He opened the door and told her to come in, and then asked if Jai Yu even knew what time it was. But it was empty outside. Da Young closed the door and asked what was going on. Is this some kind of prank? He was confused and sat back down on the couch in front of the TV. Da Young asked who could do something like that. He reached out to take some chips and was surprised because there was nothing in the package anymore. Brother Jai Yu was frightened and fell silent abruptly, but his face was calm. Suddenly, the TV turned off and Da Young said that it turned off again. 
He asked tensely why his sisters still hadn't returned home. He's worried. Da Young picked up his phone and said that he should call her. But instead of calling his sister, he panicked and started dialing the rescue number. Suddenly, the man he had encountered on the street was next to him, but now he was many times larger. He was a monster. The monster smiled widely and asked him that he had really seen him. Da Young opened his eyes wide in horror and looked at him, and the monster greeted him. Some time ago. The man was holding a photo of Kang Kai and Da Young in his hands. He was looking for them on the street and just noticed the blonde. At present, the monster looked terrifying and invited Da Young to play a little game. He extended his huge hand towards brother Zhai Yu to grab him. Da Young didn't know what to do. His eyes were full of fear. There was a loud scream coming from his house, and then suddenly everything went quiet. Some time ago, Zhai Yu was still trying to call the company. She looked out from the corner of the building and said that she was a little scared. Zhai Yu looked at the first line company building and said that she came here because she was angry, but now that she was here, she regained her composure. In fact, she was just afraid. She asked that they would not be so angry as to harm the trainees from the other branch. She looked at the broken window and asked why it was broken. Zhai Yu remembered HWA Ran and Young Pung and said that the flame and wind are from the first branch, and they are known as the most cruel heroes. She called the Sunbi and asked him about that. Didn't she tell him that she sincerely respects him? Where is he now? But no one answered her. She chuckled and said that the reality of life is loneliness, and she made a decision. Jai Yu was determined and then said that she would return home. She picked up multicolored leaflets and said that if you look at the bigger picture, then this is all for the sake of the heroes, and this is their destiny and love. Kanchai walked past her, and she looked back at him. She was surprised and hid behind the corner of the wall, and then asked, Who is this guy who came out from there? Why are the lights on everywhere on the floors of the building, except for the floor of the first branch? She thought about who Kang Kai could be. In the evening of the same day, it was already dark outside. Kang Kai was holding a children's book about elementary knowledge in his hand. Attached to this was a note from Ta Nai saying it was a gift. She wrote on a note for him to learn multiplication. Kang Kai walked along the road and said that becoming a hero is not easy. He looked up and imagined the figure of a man who was glowing, and above his head was a crown. He thought that it still seemed to him that he was already one step away from this. He remembered how a woman looked at him from the gap. Her face was covered in blood. This was when he was still a child. Kang Kai said that he will return to her soon, so she needs to wait a little longer. He was looking at the sky, but suddenly a male voice called out to him and called him Ganchai. He turned around and saw Da Young. The blonde waved his hand and continued to call him Ganchai. Kang Kai was surprised, is it really Da Young Haing? He ran to the blonde and asked him if it was really him. Da Young called him Ganchai again and told him that he was glad to see him again, and then asked how he was doing. Kang Kai smiled and asked him if all his memories had really returned to him. Da Young smiled and told him that he remembered everything, and that is why he was waiting for him here. Da Young thought that, of course, why would he wait for him? The blonde was holding a knife behind his back. The blonde man was trembling, and a strange wire was visible from his trouser leg. The wire led to the corner of the building. There was that huge man sitting around the corner of the building. He was breathing heavily, and there was a mask on his face. He thought that this was exactly it, and he was delighted. He really wanted to do this. Apparently, he somehow controlled Da Young using this wire. The man thought about what people really were. And he didn't finish the thought because he remembered how he grabbed Dai Young at his house and showed him two photos. One photo was of Kang Kai and the other was of Jai Yu and Dai Young pointed at the photo with the high school student. The monster thought that people were funny. Everything was as he heard. Kang Kai recognized him and even considers him a good person. Dai Young's body continued to talk to Kang Kai. In his mind, the blonde thought that he really felt sorry for the student and did not want to do this. It was as if everything inside his body was black and red. His eyes looked crazy and Da Young thought that he had no choice. Kang Kai understands this. After all, he must protect his family. The blonde's mind was in panic and he swung a knife at him. Da Young thought that it was not his fault. Suddenly a loud sound was heard. Zhai Yu kicked the monster in the face. Da Young looked at the monster in shock. His sister looked serious and the monster flew away from the blow and fell. He rubbed his cheek with his hand and asked what, who was she? But he didn't finish his thought because Zhai Yu suddenly grabbed him by the collar of his t-shirt and asked him why he was asking the obvious. She told him that she was a hero and then called him a pig carcass. 
Shai Yu's eyes began to glow yellow, and her nails became claws like those of an animal. She waved her hand and yellow streaks of light came out. She wounded the monster's hand from a distance. There were three deep scratches on his arm, as if an animal wanted to tear him to pieces. He told Jai that he kept wondering who she was, but it turned out that she was just Da Young's sister, and unlike him, she was brave. Monstra told her that he knew a person like her, and that they were people. But he didn't finish his thought, because Jai Yu quickly appeared next to him, and he asked her to listen to him. She screamed at him that he was talking nonsense. He's a psychotic pig who used an unemployed quitter to make fun of him. Da Young and Kang Kai looked at them in shock, and Jai Yu continued to scream at the monster that everything he was saying was complete nonsense. She swung her clawed hand at him and told him that it was pointless to listen to his chatter. The monster looked at her in fear, and Jai Yu hit him so hard that they both rose into the air. It was a rising blow. The monster collapsed to the ground, and he thought that she was really a person. After all, her movements were like those of a dog. Jai Yu squatted in front of him, and a transparent yellow dog levitated on top of her. Her eyes glowed yellow, and she opened her mouth wide, showing her teeth. The monster stood up and looked at his hand, and then said that he felt like he was fighting a mad dog and not a hero, and that that was great. He licked his lips and said that he wanted this moment. Jai Yu was all glowing with a yellow light. She looked very angry and told him to shut his mouth because his chatter was very annoying, and then changed her mind and told him to keep talking. After that, she quickly ran to him and told him that she would tear his dirty mouth. Suddenly, her eyes opened wide and behind her everything became dark. Jai Yu looked at the huge monster. He smiled ominously and waited for her to get closer to him. She thought about what is this? Why does she have a bad feeling? She chuckled and abruptly took off from her seat. Jai Yu thought about what then? And she didn't finish the thought, because she found herself on top of the monster, behind his back, and asked him, What about this? It was a bite to the neck. Jai Yu approached the monster's neck, but suddenly a huge mouth with large fangs appeared on its back. She opened her eyes wide and landed on the ground. Blood ran down her arm, and she looked at the monster with confusion. Jai Yu furrowed her brows and gritted her teeth, and he asked her what happened. After all, before she looked like a valiant, fierce dog. Many mouths with fangs appeared on his body, and he asked her if she had now turned into a cute puppy. This monster was Big Judy. This was its final stage. Its color was yellow. Judy told Jai Yu not to overwork herself, because everything is just starting now. Da Young was still sitting on the ground looking at his sister, his eyes wide in shock and sweat on his face. He thought about what the hell is going on now. Is his sister a hero? He can't believe it. And this monster has turned into an even scarier monster and looks much stronger than before. He told himself that now is not the time to lose his mind, because if this continues, Jai Yu will die. He looked back at Kang Kai and thought that he couldn't just stand still and he had to do something. Kang Kai was also shocked, and meanwhile Jai Yu stood in front of the monster and thought that this cannot be. He has an enhanced consciousness and a maximum increase in physical level. Judy must have been level yellow, but why is yellow walking around? What is the first branch doing anyway? Jai Yu gritted her teeth and said that she could not believe that she would have to fight the yellow one herself without the help of the masters. After that, she licked the blood from her hand and said that it bothered her. A yellow glow appeared around her again, and she said that it was difficult to find yellow ones due to the rules of the headquarters, but she could not miss this chance. Jai Yu jumped sharply, and her shadow was everywhere around the monster, because she was moving very quickly. It was an instant step, and she shouted to the monster that even if he managed to overtake, then with her sudden change in speed, he would never be able to catch her. She kicked off the ground and jumped again towards Judy's neck, her mouth wide open. She wanted to use a bite to the back of the head, and the monster told her that she was mistaken, because he was not the one who needed to overtake his opponent. On his back, his mouth opened wide again in front of Jai Yu's face, and she screamed loudly in pain because he had bitten her. The monster told her to meet his Judy. He protects him and leaves him the opportunity to indulge in his favorite pastime. He didn't finish his thought and hit Jai Yu hard, and then told her that his favorite thing to do was eat. She flew several meters away from his blow and fell to the ground, and then asked him what kind of Judy was protecting him. The monster jumped and ended up on top of Jai Yu, and then landed next to her, and the mouth on his stomach grabbed Jai Yu's hand. She screamed, and Judy swung his huge hand again, and then hit her. But she dodged his blow, and then the monster told her that he couldn't believe it, and then asked her if she was really not as ordinary as he thought. Jai Yu looked at him, 
All her hands were covered in wounds and blood. She thought that the mouths on his body moved of their own free will. This protected him and attacked her at the same time. Any of her rapid attacks had no effect on the monster. Her gaze was serious, and she thought that this is what they call absolute protection. A terrible huge monster stood right in front of her, and she began to show a strange sign with her fingers. Jiayu thought that she realized this after her two attacks. But she didn't finish the thought and told him that she wanted to save it for camp. She made a sign with her fingers that looked like a class and thought about how she couldn't defeat him. Suddenly, a yellow light appeared around Jiayu again, and she said that at least for now. And she didn't finish. Her hair stood on end and her eyes widened, and she told Judy to be ready because she was going to give it her all. Suddenly, they were interrupted by a loud scream from a guy. Da Young held a bloody knife in his hand, and Kang Kai lay at his feet. He shouted to the monster that he had done it. He did what the monster ordered him to do. His hands were covered in blood. Kang Kai's shirt was also covered in blood, but it seemed like he was alive. Da Young told Judy that now, as he ran around, he should let him go with his sister. Yu Jin was shocked. She shouted her brother's name loudly. He grabbed her hand and ran in the other direction, and then told her that they needed to run away faster. Kang Kai lay near the monster's feet. Da Young and his sister quickly ran, and she asked him what he did. She asked him to let go of her hand. Da Young told her that he made a deal because this monster told him that if he gave him this schoolboy, he would let him and his sister go. So he donated to them. He told him that then he would not touch them. Therefore, she must trust her brother and follow him. Suddenly, Jai Yu kicked him and she fell. She asked him if he was really that naive. Does he really think that the monster will keep his promise? He just left a man and so what? Victim, has he gone crazy? Jai Yu is furious. She told him that it doesn't matter if he is unemployed or looking for a job, but at least he shouldn't give up. Da Young looked at her with wide eyes while she screamed at him to be a real person. Suddenly, Judy appeared behind Jai Yu, holding Kang Kai in his hand. She turned to him and screamed, and the monster suddenly hit her in the face so hard that she flew back and landed on the ground with a crash. Judy held Kang Kai's head and told Da Young that things were just starting to get interesting, but he ruined everything. The blonde looked at the monster in horror and then asked him that he had really lied to him. They made a deal. He said that he would not harm him and Jai Yu. The monster laughed loudly, and Da Young's face became even more frightened. The blonde began to run away from him and ask for help. Judy told him that he had ruined his fun, and then noticed an iron object not far from them. He grabbed it and threw it at Da Young's back, and told him that he must be punished. Brother Jai Yu screamed in pain and fell to the ground. The monster told him that he was unemployed, that he was about 30 years old, and that he blamed society for his failures. In addition, he had no prospects for the future he was a loser. Da Young was lying on the asphalt and trying to crawl away from the monster. Judy asked him if he knew what was typical for people like him. Da Young continued to scream, and the monster told him that no matter the situation, people like him trust others too easily. Da Young screamed loudly in pain and fear. He crawled to a dead end. There were boxes lying around, and Judy asked him what happened to him. Is he really upset? It was his choice to kill Kang Kai. It was he who distracted Jai Yu. It was all his decision, so this ending is because of his choice. Da Young was covered in blood, his clothes were torn, and the monster told him that he was the one who killed them all, and then thanked him and said goodbye to him. Suddenly Kang Kai, who was hanging in his hand, swung and hit him, and the monster opened his eyes wide. Judy trembled and Kang Kai stood in front of Da Young. The monster looked at the impact site, it was glowing yellow, and he thought that this couldn't be happening. Da Young's eyes widened, and he questioningly called out to Kang Kai, who stood belligerently in front of him. The monster got angry and called the high school student trash, and then said that he should know his place. It will make him regret his choice. Kang Kai stood calmly in place, and a blue glow appeared around him, and he told Judy that he was not trash, because he was. But he didn't finish the thought, because he remembered how he was in the hospital after the fight with Chip. Kang Kai looked Reshimo, his eyebrows furrowed as his hand glowed yellow. He swung his fist at the monster and shouted that he was a hero. He aimed his fist at the monster's leg and wanted to hit him, but Judy hit him sharply in the chin with his huge hand. In past, Ching Yul asked Kang Kai which number one he was talking about. Does he really want to become the number one hero? Kang Kai sat on the hospital bed and answered him negatively. He clenched his hand into a fist and told the director that he would definitely be the number one hero. Ching Yul grinned and told him that there were many people in the world who could easily deal with the yellow ones, 
and then asked how he was going to become stronger than such people. Kang Kai told him that this was not the case, and that is why the director was surprised. He told Chen Yul that strength alone will not make him number one. At present, Kang Kai flew into the air from the monster's punch and then suddenly grabbed Judy by his arm. The monster was surprised. In front of him was an angry Kang Kai. The high school student thought that the one who is able to endure, the fighter of incredible stamina, is the real number one. Da Young looked at Kang Kai, who was trying to defeat the huge monster, and his eyes widened in shock. The monster thought that he expected this, because in the face of the fear of death, true strength and character are tested. He became alarmed and thought about why he was afraid. Judy looked at Kang Kai's burning fist, and then the high school student hit him hard. Kang Kai waved his hand again, and blood appeared on the monster's cheek. He thought that they could really hit him? His defense Judy was scared, and did not react to Kang Kai's blow. He is weaker than his defense mechanism, so why did this happen? The monster looked at the guy, and thought that now everything was clear to him. This high school student would one day become a huge source of concern for Naoraka. King Kai swung again, and the monster thought that it was not too late. But he didn't finish the thought, because he shouted to him that he would tear him apart. He swung his huge hand, his eyes glowing with hatred, and then he punched Kang Kai in the face. The hero in training jumped from the blow, and then grabbed his hand with his teeth. The giant waved his hand to throw Kang Kai off it, and then hit the floor and so the high school student jumped away from him. The monster panicked and began to look for Kang Kai, and suddenly he appeared right in front of his face. Everything around them glowed green, spikes appeared on the monster's back, and he shouted at him not to joke with him. Kang Kai covered his face with his hand and was surprised, and the monster quickly clenched his hand into a fist and hit him. The hero in training was lifted into the air by the blow, and the monster jumped towards him and hit him again. Kang Kai was almost unconscious, and so the monster raised both of his hands and screamed at him to die. After that, she began to quickly strike him all over his body. The giant laughed loudly and told Kang Kai to remember this well, because this is the power of the Big Judy from the Daruk tribe, the elite troops of Naraka. Suddenly the monster opened his eyes wide, and then touched his body with his hand and said that he was deflating. Jai Yu suddenly appeared and kicked him in the face. The giant said that he was even surprised by this, and then hit her with his knee and told her that she scared him. Jai Yu flew away from such a strong blow and fell to the floor. Her clothes were covered in blood, and the monster said that she still had strength left, and this was incredible. The giant walked towards Jai Yu and told her that it was a good try, but suddenly Da Young shouted at him to stand still. He was crying, his clothes and hair were covered in blood, and he was holding a shard of glass in his hands. Da Young looked at the monster's huge back with fangs and said that he couldn't stand it anymore because even now he couldn't hold both of them. But he didn't finish speaking because the giant quickly slapped his hands. Da Young screamed in pain as half of his arms were cut off. The monster stood in front of him and asked him what he was doing. Did he really think that he could do something if he plucked up the courage? It's useless. Da Young fell to his knees, his hands were cut off, and there was blood everywhere, and the monster told him that he was a failure who had denied reality all his life. Da Young was sitting on the ground in a prayer position, and the giant told him that now his position was ideal, and this was the only option that suited him. Judy told him not to be upset, because he would kill him along with his sister, she had already spent most of her strength. But behind him was Jai Yu again. He tried to hit her again, but her speed was too fast, and so he lost her from his sight. At this time, Da Young grabbed his hips, and the mouth on the monster's stomach grabbed the blonde's head. The giant thought that Big Judy was acting on his own, and he was completely confused. Da Young continued to hold the monster by his hips, and thought that he knew that this was too much, that this was better. He's a useless 30-year-old loser. He remembered his sister's face, and thought that this was at least the last time. But he didn't finish the thought. Da Young was crying, he clenched his teeth tightly, and blood flowed down his head, because the mouth on the monster's stomach was squeezing his head. He remembered how Kang Kai tried to fight against the monster, and thought that he didn't want to die as a loser. Suddenly Da Young shouted to his sister to grab the giant's left hand. Shai Yu jumped and wrapped her arms and legs around Judy's hand, and so her brother shouted at her to pull the monster's hand. She screamed, and the monster looked at them questioningly. Kang Kai was running towards the monster, there was a blue light around him, and his hand was glowing yellow. He screamed, and then struck the giant with all his might. The monster screamed in pain, the skin on its body twisting from Kang Kai's blow. Some time later, 
Tanai worriedly said that Da Young had 60 bullets and his vitality was running out. She shouted to the workers to inject him with another 500 milligrams of adrenaline. Da Young was lying on the ground with many devices connected to him, including his hands that were connected to this to restore his hands. Young Pung asked Tanai what condition Da Young was in now. She told him that due to the fact that she revived his body cells two days ago, the rate of regeneration had decreased significantly. For some reason, Da Young's left palm had a deep stab wound and most of the cells in his body were already necrotic by this wound. The blonde lay with his eyes open, and Tanai continued to tell the captain that she was trying to restore both of his arms at the same time, and this is not an easy task. Da Young recalled the past battle and thought that Judy's defense mechanism mouths with Fang's act independently, and he took advantage of this. He rushed straight into its mouth like a prey and held it, causing the monster to damage its side of its body, and this made it possible to attack it in this area. Young Poon said that among all the strategies he had seen, this was the worst, and then he smiled ominously, his eyes lit up, and he told Da Young to survive. The blonde was thinking about what kind of person this is. Why is he smiling? Young Pun looked like a demon, and the blonde was haunted by this. Da Young began to cry. He thought that he felt terrible, and he couldn't stop crying. Meanwhile, Judy watched them from the side. He held his wounded side with his hand and sighed heavily, and then stood up and walked in the other direction from them. He thought that there could be no mistake here. This high school student is definitely from the Octagon. He needs to escape from here while Kang Kai is unconscious. But he did not finish the thought, because Young Poong stood in front of him, and he thought that he would die. The captain looked intimidating. He told the monster that if the heroes fought for their lives, they had to die and the monster did not even have basic manners. The giant panicked and opened his mouth wide, and the captain smiled questioningly and opened his eyes wide. Yong Pun's face inspired fear, and a strange device with a red button appeared in the giant's hand. He grinned and asked the captain if he really thought that he would not have a trump card. On his palm was a mouth from which came a white white wire that was connected to the device in the monster's hand. He pointed at the building and told Young Poon that he had planted a bomb in this building. The giant pointed his finger at one window in the building and told the captain that there was a mother and her son crying because they were happy that they were alive. But they still don't know what awaits them. Young Poon better hurry up and save them if he doesn't want innocent people to die. The giant began to count from five to one and the captain stood motionless and smiled. The monster was surprised and the building exploded. Young Poong looked like a madman, his eyes were wide open, and he continued to smile, and the monster in a panic called him a psychopath and shouted at him that he killed ordinary people. He's a hero. The captain smiled and asked him with a grin if he really thought so. His fan glowed blue and suddenly pieces of his limbs began to be cut off from the monster's body. The giant screamed in pain and asked Young Poon what was happening. He asked him to stop. The captain stood motionless, everything around him was glowing with the blue light, and he asked the monster with incomprehension, why should he stop? It was his own fault for not dodging his blows. He waved his fan and told him that he had done nothing wrong. Pieces of his body flew from the monster, and he screamed in pain, and then again asked Yong Poon to stop. The torn pieces of the monster's legs lay around the captain, and he asked him if the giant himself had planted a bomb in the building and detonated it, causing the death of innocent people. Young Poon looked at him with disgust and told him that he wouldn't just leave it like that, and it was time for him to get rid of the trash. The monster screamed, and its head was cut into two parts. The captain continued to wave his fan, standing in one place, and the monster's body was torn into small pieces. Tanai approached the captain and asked him if everything was okay with him. Young Poon asked her what he told her earlier. The building was burning from the explosion, and she answered him that, as he said, the people living in those buildings were evacuated even before the bomb exploded. They stood in the middle of the giant's body parts, and she told the captain that the condition of the wounded had stabilized, and now they can only wait. Young Poon noticed the photo on the ground and reached out his hand to take it. At this time, a beautiful woman with long white hair was carrying a pet carrier in her hand. She was wearing a white robe with the same mark as Jai Yu's jacket, and behind her was a man wearing a black suit and glasses. Tanai told Young Poon that the trainee in the 4th Division was taken by the Division Engineer, and this is the first time that the yellow rank was found so late. She looked worried and told him that if they had been delayed, the damage would have been even worse, and then asked him why the rank card had not activated. 
Young Poong held the photo in his hands and told her that he thought that the card was not only inactive, but the monster could just pretend that it was not working. He looked at the photo. It was Pick, Kang Kai, and Da Young at the festival. Suddenly, HWA Ran came to them. He smiled widely, and the pupil in his black eye glowed, and he asked them what it all meant. Tanai was surprised and asked him why he was here. He asked her why he shouldn't have come. The appearance of a high-ranking mysterious person whose card is not activated. HWA Ran asked her that such a situation really does not require his presence. He stood behind Young Pung and leaned towards him, and then told him that he was a little offended by his words. He asked the captain if he really suspected him in this situation. Young Pung answered him in the negative, and HWA Ran opened his eyes wide in surprise. The captain told him that he believed him unconditionally, and then turned his head in his direction and smiled darkly. He told HWA Ran that he believes him because they are a team. The head stopped smiling and opened his eyes wide, and then chuckled. He laughed, and Tanai looked at him worriedly. HWA Ran smiled again, his eyes lit up, and he told them that this time he took a chance. He smiled ominously and called the Captain Pung son, and then told him to continue watching. Young Pung walked in the other direction from them. He looked tense and unhappy, and HWA Ran told him that they were a team. Some time later, Ching Yul held the paper in his hand and asked Young Pung what secret he was talking about. He was surprised and asked him what a secret investigation meant. The captain stood at the edge of the roof of the building and looked into the distance with an emotionless face, and then told him that yesterday they had a yellow one and he had a photo. The director looked at the photo and then told him that if someone gave him this photo, then he could understand why he acted the way he did. Twelve years of formal diplomatic relations with humanity seemed like a gift to someone who had been suppressed in times of peace. The skill system is a peacekeeping system that can detect uncontrollable monsters in advance. He asked Young Poon if the system could not detect the appearance of a monster. Ching Yul told the captain that this was a serious problem, and then asked him what if this was a beginning and not an exception. He remembered a huge eye, in front of which there were figures of people, and asked Yang Pun, what if that thing has a level higher than yellow? The captain told the director that this is why he wants to find out about Peak, because these guys are not going to make hasty movements, and their media is still protecting Peak. He remembered the news he had seen. The article stated that the video hosting star, Chief Bear Peak, had disappeared and the police were investigating. A festival dedicated to the 12th anniversary of the establishment of peaceful relations in Narak was held in the park near Lake Narami. Accordingly, the video hosting Star Peak hosted and successfully completed the event. Ching Yul told him that Yellow was eliminated by the ranking card, and this is the first time since the beginning of the Era of Peace. He thought about it and asked Young Pung why he wanted to conduct the investigation without anyone finding out about it. The captain twirled his finger in the sky and told him to look at the back. Ching Yul inquiringly turned the photo over in his hands and then opened his eyes wide. There was an inscription. He asked Young Pun if the word Utopia was written there. Maybe this. But he did not finish the thought because the captain told him that this was an old bridge and then asked him that he also knew this. Young Poon put on a serious expression and said that this is an association of humanity. Three years ago, Utopia was a small company that is now listed as number two in the market since the Humanity Association invested in them. The director asked him if the association had invested anywhere else. Young Poong told him that they invested in heroes, and it's all a little suspicious, but he literally feels it. He furrowed his eyebrows and said that he smelled something unpleasant. Chinyal closed his eyes and seemed to glow with pride, and then told the captain that he understood everything and would keep it a secret. He would do everything he could to help him. The director told him to try hard, but Young Poong asked him what it means to try hard. What about the director himself? Ching Yul opened his eyes wide and panicked, but suddenly they were interrupted by Tan Nai and Kang Kai coming to them. The high school student told the captain that he had returned, and Tan Nai told them that his recovery rate was higher than that of the average person, and that everything was fine with him. The director was shocked, and he looked in their direction with a serious face. He asked Kang Kai if he was the trainee. Young Poong calmly closed his eyes and asked the director if he was right that a month had already passed. Ching Yul didn't understand what he meant, and so asked him what he was talking about. The captain looked at him seriously and told him about the camp. The director panicked and asked him if he was really talking about hero camp. Young Poong told him that this time, their first division is also participating. 
Ching Yul thought that he really wants to send an intern who has only been working for them for three days to a camp that will open in a month. This is too reckless. What is Young Poon thinking? The captain approached Kan Chai and told him that he would train him for the remaining month. He smiled ominously and told him that if he could not cope with the knowledge base, then he needed to prove that he was a hero in a roundabout way. King Kai looked serious and thought about what camp are they talking about. He imagined a regular outdoor camp with tents. Everything has a rating, and the same goes for heroes. The value of people depends on their assessment, and this range is enormous. The rank card is the color of the cards that determine the hero's tasks. This is assigned depending on the rating. Yellow, orange, red the color of the master. Blue, light blue, green the color of the official employee. Purple is the color of the intern. Octagon members are called masters. These are the strongest heroes, and there is a big difference between them and other ranks. And the rest are completely different. A month ago, near Dagwellyang, a white car was driving along the road at fast speed. The man was playing a game on his phone and asked if there was really only one antenna here. A fat man with red hair said that this is a problem because he needs to reach the maximum level before he goes to the Green Dragon King on hard mode. This man's name was Um Siak Jin, and he was a trainee from the second division of heroes. He looked out the window and asked when they would arrive. The sign of the hero company was painted on the van. Siak Jin shouted that it was just an old village. He looked at the guy who was sitting next to him and called him a lazy fool. Siak Jin hit him hard on the head with his hand and shouted. He asked him how he was able to sleep if he was so nervous. He called him Mr. Zero points and told him that he was in control. This guy was Lee Soo Young. He was also a trainee of the second division of heroes. He was several times smaller than Siak Jin. Su Jun laughed awkwardly and rubbed his head with his hand before apologizing to Siak Jin. Every year, each hero division selects two trainees. Meanwhile, several classic Asian houses were located in the mountains. This was the third division of heroes. A man in a long robe said that the silent creature that hides under their feet and watches all living things is the earth. On both sides of him in a line stood people wearing the same robes as his. The man told them that they were noble brothers who continued to be proud of their land. On the other side of the ranks sat two people, and a man in a robe called them brothers and shouted that they should never lose their pride. Two people in a red and blue mask sat on one knee and bowed their heads before the head. The man in the blue mask was named Muin Hosan, a trainee of the third division of heroes. The man in the red mask was named Mayan Sosan, also a trainee of the third division of heroes. These trainees are sent to assessment camps and will undergo tests to become official employees. Meanwhile, a man in a black suit waved after the helicopter took off. The girl named Njai Yu was a trainee of the fourth hero division. A girl with short hair stood next to her and held the wolf by the leash. This girl's name was Han Kang He. She was also a trainee of the fourth hero division. They were both wearing green vests. Jai Yu asked Kyung He about where the master was locked up this time. She told her that since they were here, he was probably already watching them. This camp was called the Leveling Camp. Meanwhile, Kang Kai was sitting in the passenger seat of the car and asked Yong Poong for forgiveness, and he told him to keep the high school student quiet. There were a lot of cars on the road and Kang Kai wanted to say something again, but he was interrupted by the captain because he told him to shut up. The high school student wanted to say something to him again, but Young Poong again told him to shut up. He asked Kang Kai why he lived. Why does it exist? Just to make him suffer. The captain told him to answer his questions, and Kang Kai apologized to him again. But Young Poong told him to shut up again. Meanwhile, in the level up camp, a man in a black suit looked at a notepad and said that, like last year, they had two trainees from the second, third, and fourth divisions in the camp. The girl with long blue hair listened to him carefully, and then told him that she was wondering who would be the worker this time. This girl was Joanna. She was the leader of the task force in the hero leveling camp. She looked at the huge screen where all the trainees were displayed and told him that she was looking forward to starting. The man told her that if there is a shortage of participants, the headquarters will cover their shortage and therefore, this time the headquarters is using the T-17 model. A robot sat on a chair with a company sign on its chest. The girl remained silent and then looked at the man with confusion and asked him where the participants from the first division were. He told her that they had not yet arrived at the camp. She furrowed her eyebrows and asked him if they had been told the exact collection time. He answered in the affirmative, and then Yo Anna rubbed her temple with her finger and told him that 20 minutes had already passed, 
and then asked him why they weren't there yet. The man told her that he did not know this, and she asked him if he had tried to contact them. The man in the suit told her that this is what he has been doing for the last 10 minutes, but young Poong is not answering his calls. Meanwhile, there were a lot of notifications on the captain's phone. Yo Anna remembered the faces of HWA Ran and young Poong and called them idiots from the first division, and then asked why they even joined them. Why can't they be normal? Are they even going to go offline? Yo Anna looked at the big screen, it showed young Poong looking angry and yelling. She asked what they were doing. The manager sighed heavily and said that she had trusted them in vain, and the man asked her what they should do now. Maybe they should reschedule their time a little. Yoanna told him that he couldn't do that because she wouldn't forgive them for neglecting the rules. If they don't show up for the test, which starts at 12 o'clock, they are automatically excluded. The man in the suit calmly agreed with her, and the time on the clock was gradually approaching 12. Meanwhile, all the hero trainee members were sitting in the room, Siak Jin was yawning, and Su Yung was giving him a shoulder massage. Siak Jin told him that he was good at massage, and that he was good. Still, there is something he is not bad at, and he gets a hundred points for a massage. Su Zhang looked nervous and thanked him. Siak Jin looked at everyone in the room and asked if everyone from the 4th Division were women. It was a disappointment. Su Zhang panicked, and he looked at Jai Yu and Kyan He and asked them that they really thought that wearing a military vest would make them stronger. Jai Yu looked at him dissatisfied, and he told them that they get 40 points. After that, Siak Jin looked to the side and said that if you look closely, he looked at their chests and continued to talk about how he would give 80 points for their assets. After that, Siak Jin looked at Ho San and So San and said that the third division is generally funny, and then asked if they really came from part-time work in the wilderness. He gives them a maximum of 20 points. Suddenly Siak Jin noticed the robot and asked what kind of alpha go it was. He asked the robot if he really came to play go. Bumps go is a Chinese board game reminiscent of chess, the meaning of which is to capture territory. The robot greeted him and asked him how he was doing. Siak Jai laughed loudly and asked if management really called this a hero camp. Children's street games are even more interesting than this. He told Su Zhang that this camp gets a maximum of 10 points. Jai Yu looked at him with disgust and then called him a pig and asked him if he could shut up. Siak Jin smiled and his face became kind and he apologized to her and then said that he was just saying what? And he didn't finish the thought. Suddenly his face became terrible again. He stuck out his tongue and told her that even when they are angry, she looks cute. Jai Yu got angry and called him an ugly pig again, and then asked him if he really wanted to die. Suddenly they were interrupted because Kaiang He told them to stop, because fights in the camp are punishable by immediate disqualification of its participants, and then asked them if they had already forgotten about it. She looked calm and held the wolf's leash. Kaiang He told Jai Yu that Siak Jin was deliberately trying to make her angry, and she chuckled and told her that she understood that too. Kaiang He told her that the opportunity would present itself and she should just wait a little. Siak Jin made a heart sign with his fingers, and Su Yong stopped to massage him. He asked Su Zhang why he stopped. Does he really not want to massage him anymore? And if he didn't want it, why didn't he say it right away? His face looked menacing, and he told him that he was putting him in an awkward position. Su Yong turned pale with fear and sweated, and then told Siak Jin that this was not the reason, because he was simply afraid to interrupt him. The red-haired man smiled, and then laughed loudly and hugged him close. Siak Jin pointed his finger at him and told Su Yong to look at himself, because he's just hilarious. He asked him if he agreed that there should be no fear between them. He just needs to stay close to him, because that's the only way out for a fool like him. All the other trainees just watched them, and Siak Jin asked Su Yong again if he agreed with him. The bespectacled intern looked at the floor in fear and thanked him. Siak Jin smiled and said that nothing could stop him in this 10-point camp, and then he looked at the empty chair and said that the only one he should worry about is this guy. Hosen asked So Sen if these were the first division seats. He told him that he was not mistaken, and this time the first division decided to take part. Kang He said that they still had not arrived and called them quite careless. The first and second gates are considered the strongest of the eight signs and are therefore protected by the first division. They had fire and wind. Since the founding of the camp, the first division has refrained from participating in the hero camp and the reason is not known for certain, but rumors say that they do not accept anyone weaker than themselves. This means that the trainee from the first division this time is an incredibly talented person. 
Siok Jin said that in this camp, this trainee is the only one he wants to look at. He licked his lips and said that he imagined how many points this intern would receive. Suddenly, the door to the room opened and everyone turned their attention to it. Siok Jin said that he is a guy from the first division is finally here. A huge, muscular man in an office suit stood on the threshold. He had a scar on his face and his eyes glowed red. The red-haired man laughed and called him a thug. He told him that he had exceeded all his expectations and he gets 90 points. The man didn't look like Kang Kai at all, except for his hairstyle. Suddenly, the man pointed at Kang Kai and asked him if he was a trainee from the first division. The man smiled kindly, and the high school student answered him affirmatively. The man politely asked him to take his seat, and Kang Kai thanked him. The huge man laughed and wished him luck, and the high school student said goodbye to him. Everyone looked at them in shock. Kang Kai looked at all the trainees questioningly before raising his hand and greeting everyone. Some time later, a girl named Beek Sa Rin was a coach at the camp. She introduced herself to the trainees and told them that she would be administering their first test and that she was excited to meet them. The girl had a long black dress that showed one of her legs. She had a tattoo on her leg. She smiled and adjusted her glasses with her hand and then chuckled and told the interns that thanks to her extensive work experience, she could accurately determine their moral state. The trainee stood in a line in front of her and listened to her carefully and she told them that she thought that this year's participants were very nervous because they looked like their souls had left their bodies. She looked at Siok Jin and called him a yellow pebble, and then said that he was so worried that he had shrunk in size and his face was so yellow. Sa Rin laughed at him, and he got angry and screamed, and she was scared by his sudden scream and screamed back. Siok Jin pointed his finger at Kang Kai and asked Sa Rin how could such a guy be a first division trainee. He doesn't understand this. Kang Kai looked at them seriously and then asked Siok Jin if he was really talking about him. He told him that he himself had given him 90 points. Siok Jin pointed his finger at him and shouted at him that it was a misunderstanding. Kang Kai calmly told him that he understood everything and he forgives him, and Siok Jin shouted at him that he was not apologizing. Hosan said that it's surprising that the only trainee in the first division is a high school student, and So San told him that he really doesn't understand them. Kang He said that there must be some reason for this, and then asked if there is no reason, then why? Jai Yu awkwardly crossed her arms over her chest and remained silent. Siok Jin continued to shout at Kang Kai that he had minus 9,000 points. The high school student said that he denied it, and Siok Jin chuckled questioningly. Jai Yu thought about whether this could be the case. Just as she thought, this is the same intern. Suddenly, Kang He asked her if she really knew this intern. She grinned and panicked, and then asked her about why she would know Kang Kai. She looked serious and thought that she should not allow unnecessary thoughts, because the only thing that matters now is her assessment. While she's here, she won't mess with him because he's her competition. Siak Jin kept yelling at Kang Kai. He told him it was disrespectful. He represents the first division, and his presence here is an insult to this camp. Sa Rin smiled and said that the first task would begin right now. Siok Jin ignored her and continued to shout that this camp gets minus 100,000 points, minus 5 trillion points, minus 1,000 trillion. She called him and told him that he should concentrate. But the red-haired guy could not calm down and shouted that this camp should be destroyed because it was disgusting and terrible. Suddenly, Sa Rin jumped and quickly found herself on Siok Jin's back. She kicked him with her foot and told him to shut up. Kang Kai was shocked and all the trainees thought about how fast she was. They didn't even see her. Sa Rin adjusted her glasses with her hand and told the trainees that she would tolerate any display of emotion, but she would not tolerate acts of disobedience to the camp, and then asked them if they understood her well enough. She looked terrifying. Sa Rin took out her phone and showed the screen of it to the trainees. The figures of different animals were drawn on it, a tiger, a wolf, a lion. She told them that the first task would be a team fight, because this would strengthen the bond between them. The tiger team included Kang Kai, Jai Yu, and Ho Sun. Da Young's sister complained and told Kang Kai that she didn't want to work with him, but this was a good opportunity to rise in rank. The high school student asked her if she wanted to tell him something. She remembered how her brother cut him with a knife and looked at the floor, and then told him that she had nothing to say to him and asked if Kang Kai really wants her to apologize to him. Jai Yu told him that her conscience was clear in front of him. She looked confident and said that she shouldn't lose her composure because this is her hero's journey, while Kang Kai walked up to Ho San and asked if he wanted to tell him anything. The high school student smiled benevolently, 
but the man in the mask did not understand what he was telling him. King Kai asked him if he was right in his speculation that he knew him. But Ho-san didn't understand what the high school student was talking about at all and asked him what he meant. King Kai asked the man in the blue mask if he was a member of the team at Lake Narami Park. He was there too. He has a good memory. Shai Yu looked annoyed and Ho-san responded to Kang Kai about how he wasn't there. The high school student got upset and asked him if he was telling the truth. Suddenly Da Young's sister loudly asked him if he was joking now. But Kang Kai didn't understand what she meant and asked her who she was. She looked at him questioningly. The wolf team included Kang He and her pet wolf, as well as So San. They bowed politely to each other. The lion team included Siak Jin, Su Young, and the company robot. Siak Jin gritted his teeth with displeasure, and his partner with glasses looked at him warily. The red-haired guy shouted to them that if they interfered with him, he would kill them, and then he asked them if they understood him. The robot raised his hand and said that he accepted this information, and Su Zhang, with frightened eyes, answered him in the affirmative. Jai Yu looked irritated and again told Kang Kai that her conscience was clear in front of him, so he could leave her. But she did not finish the thought, because he told her that he understood her. Kang Kai told Ho San that he felt like he was the right person. The masked man did not understand what he was talking about and asked him about it. The high school student told him that he shouldn't laugh at him mindlessly, and Ho San agreed with him. Kang Kai walked closer to the masked man and covered his mouth with his hand so that no one would hear him, and then told Ho San not to act recklessly. Jai Yu stood silently next to them, and So San asked the coach what their first task was. Sister Da Young, meanwhile, hit Kang Kai. Sa Rin smiled and waved her hand, and behind her, three huge doors suddenly appeared from the ground, and she told the trainees that the first test was a speed raid. A raid is a journey in which heroes defeat mobs on a specific map, and their goal is the final boss. This is the perfect opportunity to show off classic and heroic skills. Each team must navigate the map, and the team that can defeat the final yellow boss is the winner. Sa Rin told the trainees that the winners will get an advantage in the next stage, and the last place will automatically be eliminated. He opened his eyes wide and smiled darkly, and then asked them if they agreed with her that it was easy. Siak Jin gritted his teeth and told his teammates to follow him slowly. Very quickly, they ran through the blue door, and he told them that Siak Jin would take first place. The lion team encountered the first monster bots and Siak Jin received an alert from the system asking how many volts he would use to shoot. There was a blue light coming out of his palm, and he said it was using a thousand volts. The system told him that the energy was charging, and then blue electricity came out of his hand. Meanwhile, the tiger team entered another door. Jai Yu smiled and asked her partners, will this electric barrel really not shut up? She meant Siak Jin. After that, she told them that they needed to hurry. Ho San agreed with her, and then told Kang Kai to tell them if he got tired to slow down. Jai Yu and the blue masked man ran quickly, Sister Da Young looked back. A high school student was slowly running after them. Suddenly, he stopped and began to breathe heavily. Kang Kai was weak in sports and told them that he was already tired. Jai Yu got angry and shouted at him that he himself told her that he was fast. She asked him what should they do now if he was tired at the very beginning. They all stopped and Kang Kai told her that his backpack was heavy. Jai Yu became enraged and continued to shout at him, while Ho San asked her to calm down. This was the start of the first raid mission. Sa Rin stood in front of the huge doors and asked which team would come out first. Suddenly someone called her through the earpiece that was in her ear. This was a microphone for communicating with the participants in the task. Sa Rin asked the team what happened to them. Is it already lunchtime? She was shocked because she was told that this was a team of wolves and they had already completed the task. Kang He and So San stood calmly and behind them was a huge headless monster. The wolf Kang He stood on the severed neck of the monster. She told Sa Rin into the radio that they had finished the task. The wolf team completed the task in 10 minutes and 12 seconds. The coach thought that they had really defeated the final boss in just 10 minutes. There were only two of them. Even official workers could not cope with this, including her. She tested and pursed her lips. Sa Rin looked unhappy, and Kai and He asked her if they could all have lunch together. The coach wondered if they were geniuses. Meanwhile, the lion team heard an alert that the wolf team had defeated the final boss and finished the task in first place. The remaining teams are the lion team and the tiger team. Su Zhang looked surprised, something strange like water levitated above his hand. 
Siak Jin held the little monster in his hands and gritted his teeth before asking what does this mean. Electricity started flowing from his hands again, and the little monster screamed from this, and Siak Jin grunted displeasedly and said that he lost to those who don't even have 50 points. It's a shame. He turned to his partners and asked them if he hadn't told them not to disturb him. Did they want to die? The robot asked him if he was really saying this to him. Ah Su Zhang panicked and apologized to him. They jumped up and Siak Jin told them that this was a very boring task. He will quickly figure everything out and leave here. They landed on the ground and a rock monster appeared in front of them. Siak Jin couldn't believe that this stupid team of wolves couldn't be faster than him. He smiled widely and greeted the monster, and then asked him how many points he was worth. Meanwhile, the tiger team also heard the notification that the wolf team had defeated the final boss and finished the task in first place. Remaining teams, lion and tiger teams. The man in the blue mask said that So San is truly amazing, and Jai Yu asked that Senior Kaing He had really finished already. Ho San turned to her and told her why don't they leave Kang Kai here and go forward together, because if they stay here, they won't defeat the boss. Jai Yu looked at the high school student, and the man in the blue mask asked her what they would do. Kang Kai looked back at her with a serious face. A couple of minutes later, the entire tiger team was running towards the final boss. Kang Chai sat on Huo San's back while Jai Yu ran in front of them. The man in the blue mask asked her why they dragged him with them. Jai Yu told him that this boss was a yellow rank and it would be too difficult for the two of them. She looked back at Kang Kai and told Ho San that he was quite strong. The high school student apparently didn't recognize her at all, so he asked Jai Yu how she knew he was strong. She got angry and screamed at him to shut up and just run after her. This is a timed raid, and they have to defeat the boss as quickly as possible, so one more person won't hurt them. Suddenly, Hosan told her that the trainee from the 4th Division was a little strange, and she told him that she had noticed it too. Jiayu asked them why they haven't encountered regular bot enemies yet. At this time in the hero camp office, Yoanna looked at the computer screen and said that it was incredible. She looked at the profiles of the trainees from the wolf team and said that they dealt with the boss in 10 minutes and then asked that wasn't the previous record 30 minutes, and that belonged to the 4th Division. This is the first time this has happened since the training camp began. She smiled and opened her eyes wide, and then said that this time, the camp was much more fun than she expected. A man in a suit entered the room, and she asked him if he had heard the news. Joanna told him that the camp had set a new record on the first task. The man looked worried and apologized to her as he was going to interrupt her. He told the manager that they needed her to hurry to the control room because there was a problem with the first task. She looked at him seriously and asked him what problem he was talking about. Meanwhile, the tiger team reached the final boss. They saw the back of a huge monster. He was holding a small monster in his hand and said that he was hungry. His eyes glowed pink and he seemed to be the one who ate all the regular monsters. The partners looked at the giant with alarm and he said that an ordinary monster was disgusting the other monster too, they were all disgusting. He turned to them and suddenly shouted. The giant noticed them and asked them if they had anything tasty. Another body emerged from the giant's body, steam coming from it. The monster was completely white, had a huge eye on its forehead, and its mouth was very wide. He asked them if they were tasty. The giant walked towards them and smiled widely. He again asked them if they were tasty. Suddenly, Hosan punched him in the face, and Jai Yu jumped up and kicked him hard with her foot. The monster screamed and sighed in pain, steam coming from his cheeks. Hosan punched him directly in the face again, and then began to quickly punch him all over his body. Jai Yu found herself behind the monster and wanted to kick him on the head, but he turned around sharply and swung his hand at her. Jai Yu covered her body with her arms. She frowned because she expected to be hit. But suddenly the giant was hit by Kang Kai. He sighed and his eyes opened wide. He was afraid because the giant smiled and wanted to hit the high school student. He hit Kang Kai and Jai Yu at the same time. They screamed in pain. At this time in the camp office, Yo Anna asked the man if body number one had really escaped. On the huge screen, there were images of two monsters, a thin one and a fat one. The man answered her in the affirmative and said that the physical restrictions of the Asper type had been destroyed and he thought it was a glitch in the system. He asked her what they should do. Do you really have to stop the test? Sa Rin came into the room and told them that there was no need to stop the test. The man told her that the monsters were of orange and yellow rank, so it was not fair. The coach asked him if they couldn't just call it compatibility. The man in the suit asked her what she meant. 
At this time, the lion team was fighting the stone monster. He swung his hand and threw a stone at Siok Jin, but the trainee was able to catch it. The system asked Siok Jin how many volts does he use to shoot. He opened his eyes wide and said that he was using a thousand volts, after which his palm became electric. The system told him that a discharge was occurring, and then Siok Jin sent electricity to the monster. The giant screamed in pain, and his entire body was pierced by an electric current. At this time, the man in the suit was looking at the profiles of the lion team and told Sa Rin that she was right about something, because their water and electricity combine well. Boss number two was Grass. Meanwhile, Grass smiled and looked at Siok Jin. He was strong against their elements. The monster laughed, and Siok Jin clenched his teeth in anger and called him a weed. At this time, Sa Rin calmly held a mug of drink in her hand and asked them if they knew which high school students were taking the entrance exams now. What do they do in such situations? The man sighed and wanted to answer her something, but Yoanna interrupted him. She told them that this made sense since the purpose of the camp was to select the best among the participants through their scores and compatibility. Seo Sen and Kaing He were sitting calmly in the dining room at this time. She told the wolf named Jack to eat a lot. Kaing He was having lunch and Seo San was standing behind her. In the office of Camp Yo, Anna continued to talk about how there are people who destroy everything, and also the number one type of attack is normal, although it is quite high level. She looked at the screen that showed the profiles of the trainees in the Tiger team and told them about the fact that these trainees use hand-to-hand -hand combat, and then asked them if this was just right for the situation. At this time, the giant with an eye on his forehead again raised his hand to attack, but suddenly he was asked to stop. The trainees held their palms in front of him to make him stop, and then together they told him that they were asking him for time to discuss strategy. The monster also raised his hand and told them that he accepted their idea. Kang Kai, Jai Yu and Ho Sen sat down and began to discuss their strategy. They wrote something down on their notepads while a giant not far from them levitated in the air and waited. Yoanna told Sa Rin and the man that if the tiger team worked together and came up with a plan, they could compete with the lion team. Xiai Yu pointed at the notepad and explained something to Ho Sen. All the trainees were wearing glasses and looked very serious. Sa Rin smiled awkwardly. What kind of teaming up is she talking about? Meanwhile, the tiger team began to implement their plan, and they rushed at the giant. Sa Rin told Yo Anna that she doesn't think they can join forces. Ho Sen swung his arm to hit the monster, but it dodged his blow. Then Jai Yu hit him on the head with her yellow notebook, and Kang Kai ran towards the giant from the side. The monster got angry. He threw the trainees aside and stomped his foot. Xiai Yu screamed in pain, and the giant hit Hosan, but the masked man was able to dodge and jumped away from him, and then exhaled heavily and said that he couldn't do anything. He looked at his hand and apologized to his master because he lacks brute strength. Suddenly, the robe on his body tore, and Hosan's muscles seemed to become even larger, and he hit the monster hard with his fist. He jumped and flew into the air, and then continued to hit the giant many times, so the monster screamed that it hurt. The giant told Ho Sen that he liked him. He opened his mouth wide and shouted to the masked man that he would eat him. Kang Kai and Jai Yu looked at the monster that was chewing on Ho Sen. He turned and told them that it was delicious and tasted like strawberries. A thick skin appeared from the bottom of the giant's mouth and he smiled, and then asked them if they were tasty too. Meanwhile, Siak Jin pointed his finger up and told Su Yong to grab the monster. An intern with glasses tried to climb up the monster and answered in the affirmative. A stream of water appeared behind Su Zhang's back. It turned into drops that hovered in the air. Suddenly, Grass found himself in a water ball, which was made by an intern with glasses. It was a water prison. But the monster opened its mouth and sucked in all the water, so Su Zhang was surprised. The grass glowed with happiness and exclaimed joyfully because he had a hydration system and now 10% of his health was restored. Siok Jin got angry with his partner and started hitting him with his hand and Su Yung asked him for forgiveness. Suddenly, the red-haired intern hugged him and told him that he had a great idea. At this time, a huge dog in a military vest was quickly running around the room. Kang Kai asked this if he could ask this something. The dog told him to shut up and that wouldn't answer him. Kang Kai told her that he understood her. This dog was Yai Yu. It was the first stage form change spirit dog. The giant laughed eerily and ran towards them, and then swung his arm and shouted to them that he had caught them. The trainees were scared. They opened their eyes wide and looked at the monster. 
The giant slammed his hands at the place where Kang Kai and Jai Yu were sitting in their dog spirit form. Meanwhile, the robot from the Lion Team said that his battle mode has been activated. He swung his fist and said that it was a medium blow. The monster made strange noises and hit the robot with Su Zhang on top of it. The bespectacled trainee fell onto the giant's belly and held onto its grassy surface tightly. He was in a water prison again. The monster opened its mouth wide again and sucked in all the water, and Siok Jin shouted to Su Yong that he believed in him and told him not to stop. The bespectacled trainee held tightly onto the grassy surface of the monster's body and thought that his partner believed in him and he would definitely hold out. He doesn't want to let Siok Jin down anymore. Su Zhang screamed because it was difficult for him to hold on to the monster, because the giant was sucking water into itself and thinking that he could do anything. The system showed that Trav had become overhydrated and his entire body was filled with water. Su Zhang blushed and smiled and then said that he had done it. The system asked Siak Jin how many volts does he use to shoot. A scope appeared around his hands and his palms began to become electrified and he said that he was using 100,000 volts. He aimed his sight at the giant's belly, where his partner hung. The system notified him that there would be a shock. Siak Jin directed electricity at the giant's head, and so the monster screamed. Trav's body was cracked and on fire, water was pouring out of him, and he continued to scream. The red-haired intern called the monster a fool and laughed. Su Young was lying next to the monster on the ground. His clothes and body were burnt, and Siak Jin screamed that it was his lightning power. Remember this. He was laughing happily, but suddenly they heard an alert that round one was over. Teams that advanced to the second round. And Siak Jin listened to what they were told, because he heard that the Tiger team had completed the test. His eyes opened wide and asked what does this mean. Meanwhile, Kang Kai held Jai Yu's hand as she sat on the floor. The man was covered in blood, he asked the monster what it tasted like. It was Ho San. He had silver hair, his entire body was covered in torn white bandages, and strange yellow seals with red hieroglyphs were attached all over his body. He held the giant by the scruff of the neck with his hands and called him a fool. Some time ago, Hosan was sitting in a strange place, there was nothing around, and drops of water were floating near him. He thought that it was useless, inside he felt quiet loneliness, and then he asked, Is this really an abyss? This is the end. Suddenly he smelled a strange smell and thought that it could be the smell of blood. Huosan smiled sinisterly, his eyes widening. The giant hit the floor with his hands, causing stones to fly. Jai Yu in the form of a dog spirit, and Kang Kai flew away from the point of impact, and suddenly someone's hands appeared from the monster's mouth. The man's hands grabbed the giant's mouth on both sides, and Hosan came out. Everything around him glowed with a yellow light, and Jai Yu was surprised by this. Huosan looked crazy, his eyes glowed, and he smiled widely, and then exclaimed joyfully. Jai Yu screamed at his terrifying appearance, and Kang Kai's eyes widened in fear. Hosan was very big and pumped up. He landed on the floor and told them that this was his second secret form. He used a goblin kick. His fist glowed blue, and he punched the giant. It was goblin flame. Some time later. Hosan took his blue mask and told his partners that the goblin strike is a fighting technique that has been used by goblins since ancient times, and he is their descendant in the 28th generation. He was again covered in bandages and had a blue mask on his face. Hosan put on his robe and told them that he could not restrain himself when he smelled their blood, which was spilled due to his fault. He showed them respect and therefore apologized to them. Jiayu was still in shock and told him that he shouldn't apologize to them. She looked at Hosan and then asked him if goblins really like the smell of blood. He answered her in the affirmative, and she asked him if it didn't work the other way around. He answered her negatively. Jai Yu asked him what his favorite food was. Hosan told her that he likes red bean stew. She asked him if he liked practical jokes. He told her that he couldn't stand it, and so she looked at him questioningly. Jai Yu continued to look at him and thought about what her master told her about the third division. They can harness the power of the local gods and their potential beyond their imagination. Kang Kai asked Ho San when he managed to pull the sword out of his chest. He shook his head negatively and told the high school student that this did not happen, and Jai Yu thought that she would remember Ho San from the third division. Meanwhile, at the Hero Camp warehouse, workers heard an announcement that the first test was over and each test participant would receive time for treatment and maintenance. After this, they must all gather in the training room within an hour. Some time later in the camp toilet, 
Siak Jin was sitting on the toilet, he held his head in his hands and said that he ruined everything because his heart was weak and he ended up attacking his teammate. This would not have happened if he had not taken the helpless Su Zhang with him, he apologized. Siak Jin was talking to someone through a headset, it was on his head. He told the man that he would do it. If they believe in him again, he will win gold next year. One more time, he asked them to believe because he promises them this. The man told him that he understood everything and Siak Jin made a scared face. The man told him that he would give him one last chance. The toilet stall door opened in front of his face and he was told that his time in the hero camp was not over yet. Meanwhile, the cat-like creature held its hands in front of itself. There was a bell on the creature's neck, it glowed yellow. The creature told Jai Yu that everything was ready. She looked at her leg and told him that he had done it very quickly. The creature told her that the wound on her leg was shallow and therefore would heal easily and then meowed. He told her that among the spirits, Atmis has always helped people from ancient times to this day. In this era of the world, they have nothing to do and so they are here to earn a living. Jai Yu clapped her palms and opened her mouth wide and then told him that before that she had only heard stories about them and was seeing everything with her own eyes for the first time, it was incredible. Suddenly, the cat-shaped creature blushed and looked at Jai Yu with love in his eyes. He told her that she was very beautiful. She was embarrassed and blushed and then asked him why he was telling her such nonsense so suddenly. The creature asked her if he could call her pretty. Jai Yu called him a fool and answered him negatively. Unexpectedly, many more Atmis appeared behind her. They all looked at Sister Da Young with admiration and said that she was really beautiful. She is really good and beautiful. Jai Yu was embarrassed and asked them to leave her alone. Suddenly, the creature pointed to his friend Atmis in pink clothes and told her that it was Yong He. He had plump lips and his eyes seemed to sparkle and Jai Yu shouted to them that they were not alike at all. Yong He made a displeased face and crossed his arms over his chest and then chuckled. Da Young's sister screamed at him to stop it. Jai Yu left the treatment room and put on her vest, and Atmis looked at her and said that she had a very cool character. A creature that looked like a cat called her a beauty and asked her to come back to them again. She thanked them and said that she hoped they would never meet again. Jai Yu walked down the corridor and thought that it was good that she only had a few scratches, but if it weren't for the goblin, everything could have been much worse. She remembered the monster's face from the first task and made a serious face. Jai Yu began to remember the past when he was very young. The corpses of people lay around her, and she looked at the back of a man who was wearing a long cloak and iron armor. She thought that she needed to become stronger in order to become someone who could stand with dignity next to this man. Suddenly, Kang Kai appeared in front of her. He had a bandage on his cheek and nose, and she looked at him in surprise. Jai Yu asked him what he was doing here. He looked at her with a serious face and told her what he was going through. Sister Da Young first made a surprised face, then smiled and frowned. She asked him what he was worried about. Was it because he couldn't do anything in the first test? Jai Yu told him that it was good that he came, because she wanted to tell him that she took back her words that he was strong. She came closer to him and pointed her finger at him, and then told him that he was weak and to give up, because Kang Kai was not worthy of being a hero. Su Zhang suddenly walked up to them and awkwardly greeted them. They looked at him and Jai Yu asked him who he was. The bespectacled trainee introduced himself to them and told them that he was from the second division. His body was wrapped in bandages and Su Zhang told them that he was here for treatment because he was injured in the first test. Jai Yu told him that he was the only one injured and then asked him that they had really cooperated like that. Su Zhang waved his hands and then told her that this was a misunderstanding. It is his own fault that he was wounded. Su Jun awkwardly rubbed his head with his hand and told them that everyone had misunderstood everything because of Siak Jin, his partner, although he talks rudely, is not a bad person. In the twelfth generation of second division trainees, Siak Jin was the best. He remembered the ceremony for the second division trainees. The red-haired man pointed his finger at him from the stage. Su Yung told them that Siak Jin chose him himself, and if it weren't for him, he wouldn't be here. Jai Yu spat on the floor and told him that she seemed to understand why this yellow pig chose him. She turned around and walked in the other direction from them, and then told Su Yong that Siak Jin had thoroughly brainwashed him. He opened his eyes wide and looked at the floor, and then told her that it was true that he did not deserve to be in this camp. He bowed before them and told them to try for his place. Suddenly Kang Kai sat down in front of him and told him that he was lying. Su Zhang asked him what he meant. 
The high school student told him that he knew everything, but the bespectacled intern had no idea what he was talking about. Kang Kai stood up and told him that no one who cries has the right to give up. Xiai Yu chuckled, and so the high school student asked her why she was unhappy. She told him that everything was fine and that they needed to go. Su Zhang stood and thought that he was probably unhappy with him. Was it really his fault? He looked at his hand and thought about what his real feelings were. Some time later, Su Yong looked at his fist and Sa Rin stood in front of the trainees. She told them that they had done their best and two teams were advancing to the second round wolves and tigers and the lions were eliminated. The bespectacled trainee was thinking that he was very angry with himself for being unable to participate in the camp on his own and being the one who was weak relative to others. He clenched his teeth and thought that it was his fault, but it made him very angry. He cried because he couldn't keep it to himself anymore. Suddenly Siak Jin put his hand on his shoulder. He looked at him kindly and told him not to be too upset, because he did everything he could. He smiled and told Su Young that this was really important, and then asked him if he agreed with him. The bespectacled intern smiled and suddenly Sa Rin asked everyone to pay attention to her. She smiled broadly and told them that the tiger team's time was 3 hours, 27 minutes and 6 seconds, and the lion team's time was 3 hours, 27 minutes and 10 seconds. She told the lion team that they had almost succeeded and their camp had decided to give them a rare chance to stay here. Su Zhang couldn't believe it. He smiled and asked her that this was really his chance. Suddenly, Siok Jin grabbed him by his jacket and swung his fist at him. His fist became electrified, and then he punched the glasses wearing intern. Everyone looked at them in shock, and Sa Rin's eyes opened wide. There was blood on Siok Jin's face, and he told the coach that only one of the team members would remain in the camp through the second chance, but now one has dropped out, which means that the second person passes automatically. The one who went further is him. He was smiling and his eyes were wide open. He looked like he was crazy. Siak Jin asked her if he was right about this. Sa Rin crossed her arms over her chest and then adjusted her glasses with her hand and said all about how the winner is Siak Jin from the second division. He laughed loudly and said that she was right. After all, it can't be that Siak Jin will be expelled. Su Zhang's glasses were broken. It was lying on the ground and there was blood all around. Siak Jin continued to laugh loudly and Jai Yu told Kyung Hee that he was disgusting. Her partner told her to keep her emotions to herself and not cause problems for anyone. Sister Da Young gritted her teeth and knitted her eyebrows and then told her that she knew it. Jai Yu looked at Kang Hee, the high school student stood in front of Siak Jin. The red-haired intern looked at him arrogantly and asked him if Mr. Minus 900 points really wants to tell him something. King Kai's eyes were burning, and he looked angry. Sa Rin told the trainees that the person who passed the next stage was determined, so they would move on to the next task. The second test is a duel. And she didn't finish the thought, and Siak Jin and Kang Kai looked at each other. She said it was a one-on-one -on -one duel. The high school student continued to stand in front of the fat intern, and Jai Yu thought about what he was doing. Is he really going to do something forbidden? Kang Kai's fist lit up with a blue light, and he swung at Siak Jin, and Jai Yu thought that the high school student is not so stupid. The red-haired intern smiled and said that he didn't know it was that simple. So simple that he even finds it funny. Siak Jin told him to go home, but suddenly his eyes opened wide. In front of him was Kang Kai's huge fist. It glowed, and that's why Siak Jin's face turned yellow. He looked at Kang Kai's fist in shock and then screamed and his fist became electric. Siak Jin directed the electricity at the high school student, but Jai Yu quickly pushed Kang Kai away. They fell to the ground, and she called the red-haired intern a pig, and then asked him if he really wanted to be disqualified. Siak Jin got angry, there was electricity around him, and he told her how dare she do this. He asked her if she really wanted to die too. They were interrupted by Sa Rin, who yelled at them to stop. She told them that if they continued, she would disqualify them right now. They must stop and go back to their places. Siak Jin remained silent and then chuckled and walked away from them. An announcement was heard throughout the camp that all test subjects moving on to the second stage were confirmed. Stage 2 will begin in 10 minutes. After a while, Kain Hee stood with her eyes closed and then she and Jack looked at Jai Yu. They seemed to be burning her with their gaze and that's why Sister Da Young was tense. She shouted to her partner that she already knew everything and asked her for forgiveness. Kang He smiled and told her that she had not said anything yet, and Jai Yu told her that she had already told her a lot. 
She crossed her arms over her chest and told Kyan He that she was wrong when she got involved in the conflict between the trainees, but that yellow pig was serious and then the high school student would have suffered greatly or... But she didn't finish the thought because Kyan He asked her that would he really die. Her eyes were always closed, and she asked Jai Yu what was wrong with Kang Kai dying. Dai Young's sister coughed awkwardly, and Kang He told her that if she was liking him because they were on the same team, then she needed to stop it. She opened one eye a little and looked at the masked people, and then told Jai Yu that this would definitely become her weakness, because everyone here is each other's competitors. Dai Young's sister told her that she knew it and asked her not to worry about it. They looked down and Kang He asked her what she would do. After all, it seems that fate did not like what she did. Standing below were Kang Kai and Siak Jin. An alert rang in the hall that the first battle of the second stage was starting with Kang Kai from the first division and Siak Jin from the third division. The red-haired intern smiled and told him that he was very excited because now nothing would interfere with them. Kang Kai stood calmly and the little boy suddenly yawned. This boy's name was Yang Huey. He was the instructor of the hero camp. Yang Huey was lying on a huge bear and told them that he was very bored and that they should hurry up because this was ordinary PvP. Kang Kai asked him what is PvP. The instructor made a dissatisfied face and asked him if he didn't know what it was. Is he really a fool? The bear told the high school student to leave. Yang Huey told Kang Kai that unlike regular PvP, there is one more rule and that is PvP with a reward. The bear told the high school student to disappear. PvP is a competition between player and player. They can use weapons, skills, whatever. The competition ends when one of the participants gives up or becomes incapacitated, but if they win, they can take the enemy's characteristics as a reward. The number of characteristics can be adjusted. Yan Huey pointed his finger at them and asked them how much would they bet. Siak Yong smiled contentedly and told Kang Kai that he would have to be generous because he puts all his attributes, everything that he has accumulated throughout his life. He licked his lips and told him that he had too few stats, so he should also bet money. Yong Huey looked at them and agreed with Siak Jun and then told him that money is the stats of the real world and then asked Kang Kai what he would do. The high school student looked at the instructor and agreed with him, and then told him that he would not take the award because he wanted to give everything to Su Zhong from the third division. Siak Jin puffed out his cheeks and then laughed loudly and said that he was about to die of laughter. He asked Kang Kai if he was the protagonist of a second-rate manhua. Siak Jin told him to be realistic. Kang Kai told him that he didn't want to be realistic, and so the red-haired intern looked at him questioningly. Kang Kai rubbed his cheek with his finger and told him that if he took away all his stats, he would not leave him alone, and that was disgusting. Siak Jin got angry and asked him what he meant. He turned sharply to Yang Huey and told him that he agreed. The instructor asked him if he was sure about this. Siak Jin answered positively, and the bear asked him if he was lost. The red-haired trainee took off his yellow jacket and said that he was tired of talking to Kang Kai. He had strange clothes on his body. Apparently, with the help of them, he released a charge of electricity. Suddenly, he glowed blue, and various objects began to crawl out of his back. The system told him that he was using 100% of the suit's power. Siak Jin suddenly turned into a robot. He was much larger than a high school student. The system told the red-haired intern that the fully armored suit was in use. Siak Jin licked his lips and told Kang Kai that he would use everything and tear him to pieces. Hosan told So San about this thing, but he did not finish the thought because the masked man told him that this was a brain technique. The third brain division is a group of heroes using advanced technology called electric light. They are very advanced in science and technology, and these technologies allow them to rise above the capabilities of ordinary heroes. The red masked man asked Ho San if he thought Kang Kai had a chance of winning. He told him that they had better get ready for the next match, and the man in the red mask agreed with him. Jai Yu looked at the arena with tension and thought that Siak Jin was already fully armed and she felt his unimaginably strong energy. What will Kang Kai do now? The high school student stood motionless while Siak Jin screamed that he felt it. He feels incredible and unstoppable power. He looked at Kang Kai and opened his mouth wide, sticking out his tongue, and then laughed and told him that it was safe to assume that he was already a corpse. Kang He said that it was strange. Why is Siak Jin already using all his power? He smiled anxiously and remembered how Kang Kai had swung his fist at him before and then thought that this was the same feeling and if he was thinking correctly, if it was not an illusion. 
He didn't finish the thought. Siak Jin opened his eyes wide in panic. He was afraid of Kang Kai and thought that before that he had experienced the feeling of fear of death. He smiled awkwardly and thought that he just made it up to himself, because there is no one who could defeat his fully armored suit, because this is science. Siak Jin tried to calm himself down and thought that with this suit he would kill him in one blow. Kang Kai stood in front of him. He looked militant, and his body seemed to be burning with red flames. Yang Huey raised his hand, and the bear also raised his paw. The instructor told everyone to get ready, and then lowered his hand as if they were in the ring and shouted to everyone that the fight was starting. The arm of the armored suit spun and glowed yellow. It was right in front of Kang Kai, but he didn't even flinch. It was a lightning strike. Siak Jin spun his hand, and electric charges appeared around him, and he hit the high school student. The wind rose in the arena, and the trainees of the second division screamed from it. Hosen covered his face with his hands, and So Sen covered his body with his cloak. Jai Yu shielded herself from the wind with her hand, and thought that Siok Jin was strong and even too strong. The wolf howled as she continued to look at Kang Kai with concern. Suddenly her thoughts were interrupted by a man's voice. He said what a pity it was. Jai Yu opened her eyes wide, she was in shock, and then she looked up. There was a man standing on the top floor, it was Yang Pung. He calmly drank his drink and watched the trainees fight, and then said that if Kang Kai loses again, he will kill him. He smiled ominously and said that it looked like the high school student had already come to his senses. Siak Jin continued to smile. There was electricity everywhere around him, but suddenly his iron hands fell off. He was perplexed and opened his eyes wide. The arms of his armored suit were torn off. Yang Pung smiled and told the high school student to go and he didn't finish the thought. Kang Kai stood in front of Siak Jin and punched him hard. The red-haired intern screamed as the high school student's punch hit his body. His armored suit was broken by Kang Kai's fist. Young Poong said that he should show them all. And he didn't finish the thought. Siak Jin screamed in pain, and the captain said that the high school student should show everyone his strength. Kang Kai smiled, his eyes lit up, and he told Young Poong that he would fulfill his request some time ago. A beautiful girl with blue eyes and a microphone in her hands greeted the audience. She said that her name is Luna, and she is the host of the largest heroes vs. Robots event. A man appeared in front of her, and she greeted Mr. Lightning Man. He laughed and greeted her. Luna told him that she had heard rumors that the T4 robot was very strong, and then asked him what he thought about this. Lightning Man smiled and told her that, with the advancement of science, one day robots would be able to protect society, but not today. He laughed again. A fat guy was watching this program. This guy was Siak Jin in the past. He was sitting in front of the computer and eating chips. Siak Jin said that the lightning man is very cool. This is what was expected from his idol. Luna told the audience that the lightning man is brimming with self-confidence. She can't wait to see what techniques he'll show them today. Luna told the audience that the show was starting. Siak Jin smiled, and after a couple of minutes his face expressed shock. The presenter asked what happened. The battle has just begun, and their hero, the Lightning Man, has already been defeated by the T4 robot. On the computer screen, a huge robot was swinging its arm at the hero, and the robot man was lying in front of him on the floor. He was covered in blood, and Luna said that advanced technology is scary. She asked the show's viewers where their world was heading. Siak Jin smiled ominously. Currently, Kang Kai hit him hard with his fist, while pieces of Siak Jin's armored suit flew around them. The red-haired intern was panicking. He was thinking about how technology would dominate this era. And it is a concentration of advanced technologies. That's why he can't lose to this Mr. Minus 900 points. Electricity appeared around Siak Jin again, and he called the suit system. The system asked him how many volts he was using for this shot. He yelled at it to shut up and turn on full power. The system notified him that a discharge was about to occur. After that, a huge clot of electricity came out of Siak Jin's hand. It took the form of a dragon. The system notified him that he had used up all the suit's charge. King Kai was screaming in pain, electricity coursing through his body, and Siak Jin was screaming at him to go to hell. Yang Pung continued to watch their fight and said that the suit of the second division was quite good. And then he called Siak Jin a pig and asked him what use was his suit. King Kai punched his opponent in the stomach again, so hard that Siak Jin's skin twisted from the impact. He flew back and fell to the floor, and then cried out in pain. King Kai's shirt was torn, and he was wearing a blue suit underneath. The captain told Siak Jin that he is not the only one who has a suit. 
Suddenly Yang Pun saw a hand in a yellow glove. The man smiled and said that he is the highest hero who protects peace and love in this world. It was Lightning Man with a shiny new suit. Lightning Man was from the second division of heroes. His nickname was Knight. Lightning Man asked the captain how he was doing. He told him that it had been a long time since their last meeting, and that's why he was very excited. Young Pung remained silent and continued to drink his drink, and the knight stood in a heroic pose and asked the captain what maybe he should greet in a heroic pose. After all, their meeting took place a very long time ago. Yang Pun made a dissatisfied face and asked him why he came here, and then the knight reminded him that he lost to the robot. Lightning Man stood up in a proud pose and laughed, and then told the captain that there is no such rule that a robot cannot become a master, and that is why he still loses. Nobody knew that he would lose. Young Pung continued to drink his drink. Suddenly the knight fell to the floor, he was standing on his knees and hands, his posture looked sad. He looked at the floor and told Young Poon that no one from the second division was listening to him, including Bobby. Bobby is his dog. After that, the knight quickly stood up and told the captain that the trainee of the first division was incredible. He can't believe that someone who just recently joined the company will be so strong. Young Pun with a calm face told him that everything was so, and the lightning man looked at Kang Kai and asked the captain what he had done to him over the past month. The captain smiled and laughed evilly, so the knight was afraid of him. Young Poong asked him what he was talking about, and then his body glowed with white light, and he told the knight that, if expressed in words, this is the control of anger. His face looked crazy. Some time ago, Young Poong waved his fan, causing streams of wind to fly, and Kang Kai stood in front of him. The captain continued to strike him many times, and the high school student screamed in pain. He was wearing a strange blue suit. The wind streams were Kang Kai, and he tried to shield himself from it with his hands. Suddenly, the face of Young Poon appeared in front of his face and said to him, Boo. Kang Kai was scared, but Young Poon continued to wave his fan. The captain told him that it was very painful, but he copes and it seems that he is not just someone's son. Kang Kai screamed in pain and Young Poon told him that his life is not like that person's, his life is not dirty and disgusting. The captain smiled widely and asked him if his mother ran away because of this. Kang Kai chuckled questioningly, he was very angry, and his eyes were full of hatred. His fist glowed yellow, and he wanted to swing at the captain. Everything glowed yellow, and the captain stopped his blow with his hand. He told Kang Kai that it was anger that made him strike. The captain smiled and told the high school student to get used to this feeling. At present, Siak Jin screamed in pain, and there was a dent on his stomach from Kang Kai's blow. Yang Pun told him that this is the only way he will become stronger. The red-haired trainee cried and asked Kang Kai, how is this possible? The power of science is great. The high school student continued to beat him and told him that he was right because he was really strong. Kang Kai's eyes widened and he told Siak Jin that today he is stronger than him. After that, he hit him for the final time and Siak Jin flew away again because the force of the blow was great. Yang Hoi and the bear raised their hands and the instructor told everyone that the match was over because Siak Jin from the 2nd Division was not able to continue the fight. Kang Kai stood in front of the red-haired intern who was lying on the floor. Yang Hui told everyone that the winner of the duel was Kang Kai from the 1st Division. The high school student chuckled proudly. All the trainees were shocked, so Sen asked Ho Sen how this happened. Didn't he say that Kang Kai was weak? Seo Sen told the man in the red mask that he was also very surprised. Ken He and Jack were confused, and she said that she had a hard time believing that a high school student was so strong, and it shocked her. Jiayu opened her mouth wide, she looked like a corpse, and Kai He said that apparently her partner was much more shocked by this. Jiayu remembered how she called Kang Kai weak, and said that he was not worthy of being a hero. She chuckled angrily, and remembered how at that moment the high school student simply smiled in response to her words. She got angry and called Kang Kai a fool. Jai Yu asked how dare he fool her. After that, she screamed and jumped down from the second floor. Kaing He did not understand what her partner was doing. The knight looked upset. He shouted that he was the ace of their second division. But he didn't finish the thought, and Yang Poong looked questioningly at Jai Yu. She was in the arena, and the bear was holding her with his paw. Yang Hui asked her what she was doing. Her turn hasn't come yet. Jai Yu called Kang Kai and shouted for him to come to her. She looked very angry, and the bear told her to leave here. To the right and left of Kang Kai stood men in black suits, and the girl thought that he looked like the same hero in armor whom she had seen in childhood. 
Her eyes opened wide, she was surprised, but suddenly Kang Kai looked at her and then quickly ran towards her. He asked her what happened. Shai Yu blushed and asked him why he was pretending to be weak. Kang Kai smiled and asked her if she was really worried about him. Sister Da Young looked at him questioningly, and he asked her if it was true. She asked him what he meant. They looked at each other questioningly, and next to them stood a bear. Suddenly Zhai Yu hit Kang Kai and asked him what he was thinking about. The bear tried to grab her and told her to get out of here. Zhai Yu screamed at Kang Kai to die. Young Huey told her to stop, otherwise she would be disqualified. The bear kept telling her to leave. Young Poon continued to drink his drink and look at what was happening below. He said that this newcomer is pretty good. The knight covered his eyes with his hands, he cried and told the captain that he couldn't believe that their division had already dropped out, it upset him so much and that's why he couldn't stop crying. Yang Poon turned to him and asked if he could shut up already. He told the lightning man that he did not know what he had been doing all these days, but his behavior was disgusting to watch. The knight chuckled questioningly and then told him that he did not understand. Suddenly Yoanna called them. A robot stood next to her and she told them to follow her because a serious problem had arisen. The knight smiled and asked her what serious problem she was talking about. Young Poon looked at him in disbelief and Yana looked worried. Some time later, the worker told the man to look at it. On the tablet was an article about the peace treaty of the Association of Humanity. In the photo there was a man with horns and elven ears and next to him stood a man with white hair. He asked him if now they could also get to Narakaka. The man in the yellow helmet told the worker that he would like to visit there. The employee called him boss and told him that he would not be able to do this while he worked here. And he didn't finish the thought because the boss smiled and asked him what was wrong with that. It's just a job, right? The employee laughed and told him that he agreed with him and was also interested. Suddenly their dialogue was interrupted by a man in a black suit and told them to leave. The worker looked at him questioningly and the man in the suit told them that the first round was over. The boss told everyone that he hoped that the walls of the building would be intact. The workers began to leave. One of the workers asked if it was time to go. Another worker wearing a mask told him that it was all over so quickly and then asked him if that meant everything went well. The boss laughed and told him that he hoped that was true. Suddenly, the head of the man in the black suit became strange. It looked like the head of a monster. The boss looked at him questioningly and the man's head was already normal and he asked him what happened. The worker in the yellow helmet told him that nothing had happened, he was just a little tired. The man in the black suit smiled and asked him to be patient a little longer. The boss agreed with him and they all left the warehouse-like room and the man in the suit breathed a sigh of relief. Some time later, standing in the arena were Kaing He and Hosan. Yang Huey raised his hand up and informed everyone that this was the second round. Kaeong He from the 4th Division vs. He Hosan from the 3rd Division. He asked them what they wanted to give as a reward. The instructor told Ken He that she could put the advantage she had won in the last test. Hosan told them that he was putting half his stats. Kaing He smiled and told them that she would do the same and maintain her advantage. Her eyes were closed, as always, and Jack was next to her. Hosan remembered that Sosan called Kaing He strong because she uses suppressive Kai to make the enemy her prey. Yang Huey lowered his hand and said that the battle was beginning. Hosan remembered that the man in the red mask told him not to lose immediately after the first wave because if he could not withstand it, then he would no longer be able to reach it and attack. Huo Sang stood in a militant pose and the cloak from his body fell to the floor. Kaing He stood calmly in place and told him that it seemed like he had heard about her power. She sighed and said that was why she didn't like the first test. Hosan swung his hand to hit her. There was a huge explosion in the arena and Kaing He said it was great. Hosan hit the ground, and she ended up behind him, levitating in the air. Kaim He told him that he was not the only one who knew about his opponent. She looked intimidating. Hosan turned his head to look at her, and suddenly the surroundings became dark. Kaim He opened her eyes. It was black and red and looked like the eyes of a snake. She asked him if the mountains would suit him. He didn't understand what was happening and asked her what mountain she was talking about. Hosan found himself in the forest with grass under his feet. He was in shock, so he started looking around and thought that this was really a hallucination. Kaing He told him to be careful because he was walking at night. And she didn't finish the thought, and many red eyes appeared in front of Hosan. She told him that walking at night could be extremely dangerous. Snakes appeared in front of him. A blue light appeared around Hosan. He said that if these were really mountains, then he felt great here, 
His fist glowed with blue light, and he began to attack the snakes.